Hey guys, welcome along to tonight's In The Circle call. This is Matt Lloyd. I'm actually calling in from San Diego. Very excited. Uh, tonight we actually have a very special guest and it's kind of rare that we get someone at this level coming along and showing you guys exactly uh, what they're doing in their business to do so well. But tonight's guest is called Charles Kirkland. Now if you haven't heard of Charles, he's actually one of the top super affiliates on ClickBank. And I was just talking to him five minutes ago and he's just telling me right now that they're doing between 400 and 1,000 leads per day. And a lot of this is pay-per-view or PPV traffic, which I'm a complete novice at. So I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be watching this very, very intently myself. Uh, Charles, are you there? I am here. Can everybody hear me okay? Perfect. Yep, coming through loud and clear. So right. we've got everyone on mute. So Charles, I'm just going to hand over the lines to you and uh, take it away. Well, thank you, thank you. Got a quick question on here, guys. I can't see the questions. Um, at least I don't think I can see them. Um, so I'm just going to be rolling through these, and if they throw some questions my way, that's fine. If you got questions, ask them. That's the only way you're going to get them answered is to ask. So with that said, um, can everybody Charles. hear me? Yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. What I might do, I'll just make you organizer here. Okay. Um, and then you should be able to see all the questions. <laughs> okay. I said, give us a second, guys. He's going to make me organizer, which will be. How do you hear me? Quick question. Let me let me make sure everybody can see me. Let me find the question box. I need you to do me a favor. I have low self esteem here. If you can hear me and you can see me, say yes, Charles. I can hear you. Cause you know what? Y'all want to know what sucks is to do an entire webinar and after the first five minutes you wonder why did everybody leave you know like am I that boring to put everybody in a coma did you like fall face first into the keyboard keyboard in a coma and you're going like boy this is the most boring thing you've ever had so uh, perfect I, I'm getting that apparently I'm getting positive feedback we can all hear me all right all right all right now guys let's go ahead and get this kicked off first of all has any of anybody ever been on a webinar that is so boring you wish you would have fallen asleep or that you, you have maybe fallen asleep. Has anybody ever been on those kind of webinars? And, I mean, it's kind of like watching the opera when you're in the heavy metal. It's just not fun. It's just not a fun thing. Well, guess what? <laughs> you're in for a treat. Has anybody ever been on one of my webinars before? Quick question. Who here has been on a Charles-type webinar? Okay, we're getting a lot of no's. Okay, we've got to fix that. We're going to fix that. Well, guys... My webinars are very interactive. I'm going to be asking you questions. I'm going to be making you do things. But I think you're going to enjoy it. So, guys, are y'all ready to get started? I mean, are you ready to learn how to make more money and get more leads? Is everybody on board with me? Okay, perfect. Well, let's get this going. I need to give y'all a quick disclaimer. Um, as you notice, this is probably most likely not your standard disclaimer. At least I hope not. Um, this is the disclaimer here. The results I've achieved are not your typical results. They are my results stemming from certain strategies that I've created and I've refined. FTC translation, I'm most likely insane, and because I can get results, doesn't mean anybody else is going to get results. Kind of like everybody's got a unique fingerprint. Guess what? We all have unique fingerprints. We all have like unique irises, so to speak. No two people can do two identical things. You're going to get a result. It may be similar, but it won't be the exact result. Is everybody cool with that? You know, that I'm not promising you fame, fortune, and riches in the next 15 minutes. Okay. Before we start, I need you to do me a favor. Take the phone off the hook, turn up your speakers, and don't multitask. And grab a pen and pencil because we need to – I want you to take notes. This is interactive. How many times have you ever been on something and it was like great content and the day later you couldn't remember a single thing? Has anybody ever had that happen? If you've had that happen, say yes. If you've actually seen just fabulous content, two days later couldn't remember a stinking single thing about it. And unfortunately, that happens more often than not. So guys, I want you to take notes because when you take notes, it somehow something magically creates something, and basically you will remember it. So I want you to remember this. So I want to kind of talk to you a little bit about affiliate marketing. Quick question, how many people here are – Familiar with affiliate marketing? Just, just a quick question here. How many people? And you're, if you've been on Matt's list, you should definitely be familiar with it. I mean, if you're not, you probably are on the wrong webinar. But anyway, I'm gonna show you some cool stuff tonight, guys. 
I'm going to show you one technique to drive insane amounts of cheap traffic with cost per view. Now, has anybody ever heard of cost per view? It's called CPV or PPV. I know it sounds like a bad disease, like you got the PPVs and you're going to die. Um, unfortunately, it's nothing that bad, but um, CPV and PPV are basically cost per view. It's kind of like this under, it's really used by mostly super affiliates. Um, the average person that gets in it loses their behind after the first day or two and says, oh my gosh, it's a scam. Can't believe I felt for any of that. How crazy. And, and then they leave, which is kind of good for us because the people that know how to use it can rack up. Okay, I'm going to show you how you can monetize traffic even if you don't have your own product. How many people on this call have their own product? Just a quick question. How many people have their own product? Well, even if you don't have a product, I'm going to show you how you can monetize it. And sometimes it's better if you don't have your own product because you can drive traffic to other people's pages and let them pay the crazy copywriters to write beautiful stuff. I'm going to show you the best traffic strategies that are working right now. I'm going to show you the top four places to get traffic that nobody talks about and a whole lot more. So does anybody think that's a bold claim to make up front? Quick question. Say yes or no. Is that a bold claim to make up front? I, I, some people are saying yes. I had not got to know yet. I know how many people are on this call, guys, so we need to keep on going. Yes, yes. Okay, Julie says no. Julie may already know me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and go. Now, I'm going to tell you why right now is the best time to start. A lot of people I know have been like, Do you, now, guys, I got a simple question. Do you know anybody who's been like on the fence about this stuff? Maybe you know they, they think they can make money, but they haven't done it yet. Do you know anybody who's like trying to make it? Have you, do you know anybody trying to plan it all out and know everything before they get started? Virginia, I'm not gonna call your name, but you know, yes, yes, a lot of people are saying yes. Well, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You're gonna learn more from just getting in and doing it than you'll ever learn from planning it. Most people spend their entire life planning to do something great, and you know what they really do in, instead is have great fantasies and great plans. Never really do anything. Um. I want you to do one thing for me at the end of this webinar. I really just want you to take action. I mean, at the end of the day, it's up to you to take action. I can't do it. Matt can't do it. Nobody can do it but you. And with that said, I just want you to realize now is the best time to start. Because you know why? Every day that goes by makes it a little more difficult. Now, I know this is a traffic webinar, an affiliate marketing webinar. You can think of Charles. Get to the point. Now, I'm about to tell you some things that really – before we even get to the traffic part, we'll either make or break you. Right now, the economy is in the dumps, at least in the U.S., and everybody's talking about being broke. Have y'all ever noticed that? If you ever watch the news, you know, everybody's broke. I mean, everybody is, apparently. Some strange reason we can all buy iPhones, iPads, bigger TVs. E-commerce is growing year after year. Amazon can't even sell – they can't even keep up with the people wanting these little fire tablets. Apple can't sell enough iPads, but yet we're all broke. So don't believe the news. We're not broke. <laughs> Do you realize we've raised an entire generation who's accustomed to buying things online? Have, have you, has anybody really put that together? Since 1999, and I'm just going to say that because that's the year I got started online to right now. Do you realize that's an entire generation? If you go to any 15-year-old and ask them to go buy something off Amazon, you know most of them probably could log into your account and buy it for you or ClickBank or anywhere else. The 40-plus demographic is the fastest-growing segment of Internet connections. You know, you know who these people are? The people with money. They're not the 18-year-olds. They're the people with money. They're the 40-plus demographics. They're the baby boomers who are finally getting into age here. Is everybody with me so far? Does anybody find these stats kind of exciting? I want to tell you one more big one. There's been a major shift in the balance of money from merchants to affiliates. Back in 1999, you know what, you know what the merchants did? We said, uh, you'd like to be our affiliate. You're lucky that we're giving you the time of day, and we'll pay you next to nothing to be our affiliate. Well, guess what? As an affiliate, you realize you can dictate the terms of your payments. You can dictate what – I can go to a CPA network and tell them, I can't do it for $43. I need to have $46.21.
And do you realize as an affiliate you hold the power? Has anybody ever thought about that? Do you know how many people have great products out there but can't sell them? ClickBank is full of great products that, guess what, that cannot get affiliates. Now, does, has anybody realized as an affiliate you can go to somebody and dictate your terms? Has anybody ever thought about that, that you're the one in charge? Somebody, if you go to somebody and they go, we can pay you 40%, I want 45%. So please follow that. The faster you set up your affiliate business, the faster you can start making money. And before we get going, you're probably going, who is this Charles Kirkland dude? The southern accent kind of talks funny, seems a little hyperactive, maybe too much caffeine. I don't know. Would anybody know what makes me qualified to teach you how to you know, how to make money with traffic. Has, have you ever been on a webinar and you wonder what, you know, what authority does this guy have? Have you ever been been to those kind of things where you hear somebody talking and you just do you think they have you ever been on a webinar and you think somebody's just making up crap? Give me a yes or no on that. Do you think how many times have you been on a webinar where you question the authority of the person who's teaching you? Okay. It's happened. It's happened. Well, I want to make sure you understand that I'm not pulling this stuff out of thin air. First of all, I'm an entrepreneur, online marketer. I'm an offline marketer. I'm a member of the ClickBank Apex Elite, and I'm going to get to that in a second. Well, that's really insane and, and how it can benefit you. And I'm also a member of the ClickBank Premier. So let's look at this. I'm one of the top one-tenth of all the affiliates at ClickBank. Do you realize ClickBank has like virtually a million affiliates? Actually, I mean, even if you were to say a hundred thousand, you know, to be in the top one hundred, you move a whole lot of money. Okay, and here's the 2012, 2011 Premier Program. I'm in the top one percent of all sellers at ClickBank. ClickBank has over twenty-seven thousand five hundred thirty-eight active sellers. Kind of cool. 2012, just because I want you to think that I don't I want you to realize this is not a fluke. I didn't get lucky one day and figure something out. <laughs> there again, 2012 in their premier program, I am listed as ClickBank's top clients. So, and here's a picture of me actually at ClickBank at a little private mastermind. Now I just want you to know I'm making not making this stuff up. It's the real deal. I mean, I'm not going to tell you anything that's bogus. I'm not going to tell you anything that's even remotely questionable. I'm just going to tell you the facts, and you have to digest them as however you like to look at them and just use them for yes or no. Okay, first of all, traffic is not money. How many times have you heard, like, how many times have you thought in your mind, if I could only get more traffic? I want a yes or no on that, guys. I know how many people are on this call right now. How many people have ever actually thought yes or no, if I could only get more traffic, I could make more money? And that's a very common thought, and that is partially right. That's like kind of like having half of a hundred dollar bill. You're partially there, but guess what? If you don't have the whole hundred dollar bill, you can't go cash it in. You can't buy anything. You just have half of a hundred dollar bill. Not really a fun date. This is the truth. Targeted traffic equals money. Would everybody like to write that down for me? Targeted traffic equals money. Go ahead. I'm gonna give you a second. Targeted traffic equals money because at the end of the day, if your traffic is hyper-targeted, guess what happens? You get money out the end of this. Does everybody agree with me on that? Targeted traffic equals money. I just want a yes or no. This is interactive. I need you to help me. I need you to work with me. Okay, perfect, perfect. Don't have a no yet. So great, great. That's looking good, looking good, looking good. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you what you can do with targeted traffic. Now, don't be mad at me. This is actually a webinar I gave a while back, so I haven't updated the stats. But 1018 does anybody think $1,018 in one day is a pretty decent day? Just just asking that. Does anybody think $1,000 a day is a, is a good day? It's getting there. It's not as good as it can be, but it, it's, it's really, really getting there. Who thinks an, 18, an $800 day is a good day? By most standards, it's a pretty good day. Still, you know, still, it could be better. Could be better. Okay. Is anybody familiar with a little call comp, company called Aweber? 
Anybody ever heard of Aweber? I've been kicked off Aweber, so this is an old picture here. I had to leave Aweber. Didn't like him anymore. Okay. Um, if most people that have Aweber, you realize this is like your today stats, and this is your stats from like the day before. Does anybody realize it's six thousand and fifty-six leads in forty-eight hours? How many? I've got a quick question. How many times have you seen people do that? I can tell you for a fact, Aweber will call you when you get this many leads and they like to talk to you because it freaks them out big time. It really does. I mean, it totally freaks them out. At one point, I had one of the fastest growing accounts at Aweber. And um, you, you, would anybody like to know the magic secret for, for getting these kind of leads? I can tell you, it's not difficult. It's really not difficult, and the average person makes it far more difficult than it needs to be. Because guess what? Inherently, as human beings, do we ever complicate things? I'm just asking. Do you think that maybe we complicate things a little more than they need to be? I mean, you may go, Charles, you know, I'm just a simple kind of guy, but if, if <laughs> quite often, we complicate it. We take things that are very simple, and we make them into like – we take a molehill and make it into a mountain. Don't know why. We just do. Now, I'm going to get to the meat and potatoes here, but I want you to say this is not something that I just kind of stumbled across yesterday and go, oh, gosh, I figured out how to make money yesterday. Let me be an expert. I want you to look at the date on this. January 19th. This is 2009. Does anybody think 2009 was like an eon ago in internet marketing? Who thinks that was a long time ago? And I want you to see here, a long time ago, Charles is still rolling in some cash. And actually, this is five weeks, $18,700.09.14. In the internet marketing, that's ages. But you know what? That's how it happens. Okay, just to prove the last point here, this is 2009, $6,000 a week from a, from a standing like wake up, here's a brand new AWeber a account, here's a brand new ClickBank account, let's hit it and get it. Okay? Now, I just, I just I don't really like just showing like, hey, I make a lot of money or stuff like that because guess what? You can make more money. It's really not difficult. But let's go ahead and talk about CPV. Now… How many people have heard of CPV? I've kind of alluded to that earlier. CPV or PPV? How many people have actually used it on this call before? Okay, David said yes, he's heard of it. Crystal says nope. Heard but not used. Virginia goes never used it. Okay, that's cool. That's fine. <laughs> you know what my goal is today? I'm going to show you how easy it is, and I'm going to let you – I'm actually, we're going to do a little interactive case study when this thing's over where we're going to call somebody to have a good day and somebody else to have a really, really bad day. So <clears throat> let's get going on that. Okay. <clears throat> this is how CPV works. Is everybody familiar with keywords? Just asking, is everybody familiar with keywords? Yeah, I, th I think most people probably are. Okay. Well, just imagine this. You develop a list of keywords, and, and I know we're all in the MLM, affiliate marketing, internet marketing, business opportunity, make money online arena, or else you probably wouldn't be here. Okay. <sighs> Has anybody ever tried to use, like, Google AdWords? Have you ever tried to, like, get a MLM or a business opportunity or an affiliate marketing product in, in AdWords? Has anybody ever tried that? You know what your chances are? Your chances are slim to none. The, the Google, Google has something for people like us. It's called a band hammer, and they like to use it quite often. Uh, they're like, oh, uh, uh, Bob, I noticed you were looking at an affiliate marketing offer. Yes, 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 Google, I was looking at an affiliate marketing offer. And Google says, yes, you know, we have Gmail, and we, we, we track everything you do, and um, <clears throat> we'd like to give you this little present. It's called Get Out. <laughs> they give you the band hammer. Well, kind of sucks. You know what? Would you like to discover how you can get even better traffic? Would you like to discover how to actually snipe traffic off of Google? Pretty, it's pretty, pretty cool. Okay. 
See up here it says like this little http dot blah 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 dot search dot com. Yep. Have you ever noticed up in the top of your browser bar it's got like a website domain or anything like that? Obviously you went to go to webinar to get to this. <laughs> Has everybody have you ever really paid attention to that? Okay. Get a little of this. What would happen if you install some software on your computer that lets you play games? J just theoretical. I know we're marketers. None of us would do it because I know I know what's going to happen because, Charles, we would never install that on our computer. You're right. We're marketers. We wouldn't. But you realize a bunch of people install adware on their computer? And has anybody, is anybody familiar with the term adware, by the way? Okay. Some say yes, some say no. Okay. Just imagine if I came to you and said, I'll let you play all the games you like, but you have to look at like one ad an hour. Do you think that's a fair deal? Or we'll give you free internet service, and you just have to see so many ads per hour. A lot of people are like, just show me a couple ads and give me free internet. Sounds like a winner to me. Happens all the time. It is a beautiful, beautiful scenario because guess what happens? Once they install this adware on the computer to get games, get shopping, get surveys, get discounts, get all kind of crazy stuff, screensavers, whenever they're browsing around, like here they go to searchengine.com, if your keyword is in that browser bar, you know what happens? It says, hey, guess what? You are going to, I don't know, would anybody like to like randomly give me a site? Right now, just type in a site. Just put a site in here. I'm going to show you an example of this. Give me a site that you'd like some traffic from. Okay. Netflix. Okay, Netflix is good. That that, that come up. Okay. <clears throat> Just imagine anytime Bob visits Netflix.com, you could have your ad appear on top of Netflix. Does anybody think that could even be potentially useful to you? I mean, even 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 remotely on a bad day, <clears throat> do you think that would be remotely? And it's not a batter and it's a full page. Well, guess what? It's super cheap. Starts about 1.1 cent per clip. It's insane. Totally insane. I tell you, see, let me explain to you. Most of the stuff that the super affiliates do aren't the stuff you read about every day, is it? What, what's the normal stuff you read about every day? Come on, come on, guys. I know how many people on this call. Tell me what is the normal stuff you hear about getting traffic? Give me the techniques and methods people preach about getting traffic. Facebook, Facebook's great. I like Facebook. Use it a lot. Banner ads, pay-per-click, that's good. Use banner ads and pay-per-click. Use blogs. Use solo ads and do that too. PPC, solo banner. I mean YouTube, that's good. YouTube actually has amazingly good traffic, by the way. Okay. I noticed nobody in here other than, other than me is talking PPV. If you want to get the same results as everybody else, what do you need to do? What do you need to do to get the same results as everybody else? Do what they do. You absolutely do what you follow the herd, and you get the same result as the herd. You know what the herd gets? The herd gets slaughtered, turned into grade A steaks, cooked up for the super affiliates who are on their own little world. Does that make sense? Follow the herd. Just prepare to be slaughtered. It's gonna. It's only. It's your only. It's. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But you will get slaughtered. Okay. <laughs> Let's step back here. You're, imagine your page popping up on Netflix for your keyword. Pretty powerful. Really powerful. Okay. I've got something even more powerful. Let's just say they typed in the word Netflix and and your stuff pops up. Do you realize you could also say if somebody goes to. Give me the number one MLM. The number one MLM site in the world. What is the number one MLM site? Come on. I need some answers here, guys. I need some people in the ball. Come on. It's late, guys. Guys, it is like Eastern time. I'm like sucking down caffeine like insane. Okay, <laughs> better networker, better network. That's good. That's good. What would happen if somebody goes to Magnetic Sponsoring, Amway, MLM, or any other site about signing up? Let's just say, let's just say, for instance, you went to the Empowered Network, just just for an instance, and your page popped up on top of Empowered Network. Do you think you could get a pop up? Do you think you could have a pop up? Which we're going to show you. 
that could maybe get you the lead that was about to sign up for the Empower Network? Do you also think maybe you could set your affiliate cookie and, and like snipe that lead from right under somebody's hands? Does anybody begin to see some potential of this kind of stuff? Just just asking. We're, I'm going to show you a live case study, but I just want to show you. Okay. Okay. Um, let's look at this. Has anybody ever heard of 101 ways to make money? Okay, James saying yes. Okay. Guess what? See that up here it says the URL right here, 101 ways to make money? You're going through you're, – you're just browsing the internet trying to make money. Or, yeah, that's it, trying to make money. Okay, quick question. Who's the person that comes to 101 ways to make money? Do you think the super experienced affiliate goes there, or do you think maybe the brand new novice, maybe newbies go there? Okay, Virginia says newbies. Okay, okay, everybody's agreeing with that. The newbies go here, okay? Quick question, is it easier to sell to a newbie or the jaded, hardened, hardened internet marketer? Which one of those are most likely to buy stuff? The newbies. Newbies are most likely to buy stuff. Okay, okay, we, so we're all in agreeing. Dude comes here, I want to make money online. He's looking at government grants, Obama's grant giveaway. He just wants to make money. Boom. Pop-up appears on the website you target. Now, you think the newbie – does anybody think the newbie in here wants to learn how to build a list or build websites? No, they don't want to build websites. They just want to make money and work from home. Stop driving to work every day. Fire the boss. Boss is an idiot. Boss is actually the – he married the uh, daughter of the boss or the gentleman who owns the company. Boss is a total idiot. Would this appeal to a total newbie? Live the American dream, looking for a serious home business opportunity. Click here to get started now. Everybody's agreeing? Do you think that would be really, really powerful to build a list of these people? That's when they're ready to buy stuff. <clears throat> now, CPV traffic is adware supported. <clears throat> People install it to get screensavers, toolbars, coupons, games in exchange for seeing ads. <clears throat> Me and you would probably not do it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Who knows? Do you think a newbie would do this? Okay, does anybody think a newbie would install some kind of adware? Well, guess what? Who is your targeted buyer? Our targeted buyer is not jaded marketers like ourselves. Our targeted buyers are somebody – I'm new to this internet make money stuff. I'd like to make some money. Give me some push-button solution that can make me money. And in exchange for seeing games and ads and all this kind of stuff that they get, they also get to see ads that are supported. How many people watch TV for the commercials? Unless it's the Super Bowl, probably not many. But TV is supported by what commercials? Everybody on here, unless it's like HBO, Showtime, or something else, can you name any show that is not supported by commercials? Just a quick question. Can you name a show that is not supported? I mean, Super Bowl is one of the biggest TV events in the year. It's got a gazillion and a half commercials. PBS, okay. Well, other than PBS, which starts out by, by saying this show is sponsored by Mobile Exxon. 
Okay, let's go ahead and get going. But does any? I'm going to show you some examples, real life examples too here. But does anybody see the power of what I'm about to show you? Does anybody see the power of this? Okay, good, good. I'm going to show you all kind of crazy stuff tonight. Traffic starts at a penny a click. It can be hyper targeted. Now. How hyper targeted would you want you want your stuff to be? Quick question: How how, how hyper targeted would, would you want your ad to be? If somebody goes to Better Network, or would you show them something on affiliate marketing, or would you show them something on like how to make money with MLM or how to build a list? It's very 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 targeted. It's insanely targeted. If somebody goes to Netflix, I could have a pop up for Blockbuster. Does that make sense? Could you get any more targeted than that? You you really can't get any more targeted. I mean, let's face it. The only way you'd get more targeted would be at their house, knock on their door, go, Bob, and I noticed you were looking right, look at Blockbuster. I'm a stalker here and I watch it through your window. And let me tell you about Netflix. Other than that, you can't get more targeted. Now, how many times have y'all heard of the quality score problem with you know Google? Okay. How many people have heard of the whole quality score? Yeah, we've all heard of the quality score thing. You know. Um, by the way, quick question: Can everybody hear me? My, I think my microphone was fading in and out. I had to um, whittle it a little bit here. Um, can everybody hear me fine now? Good, good, good. I'm good. Okay, good. Well, guess what? Would you like to know the quality score of the PPV companies? Somebody guess the quality score of an average PPV company. Quality score is like you know they look at your ad, and go, how? What do we think about your ad? Google has quality scores, and they say, hey, you know, you have to have this, and you have to have that. You know, you have to have, like, compliance and privacy policies and um, terms of service, and you need to basically disclose everything about you, including who your grandmother is and where you went to school. That's pretty much what Google wants. The quality score of the PPV companies, you know what it is? Do you have a pulse? You got a pulse, a valid credit card, some way to pay? And I've often thought if you didn't have a pulse and you still wanted to pay, they'd still let it happen anyway. That's just a fact of the nature. Okay. Now what – have y'all ever – now, now we've, we're, we're, I'm going to show you some real-life PPV examples, but let me get started with this. Have you ever wondered what niches work best for this kind of stuff? Weight loss, fitness, health, make money online, make money online. Anybody know anybody? I am, get rich quick, biz op, forex. Dating, relationship, vanity, games, and free stuff. Guys, that's it. That is it. If you want to do PPV and you're into like maybe juggling hats or maybe training house cats, it won't work. It only works in these very large mainstream type niches, which I know the webinar we on, so I know we're, we're cool with that. And is everybody else cool with that at this point? Now, I'm going to show you some crazy stuff. Does anybody want to see some like truly insane type stuff? Okay. Have y'all ever seen like a squeeze page like this before? I'm going to show you some things you can do with PPV to make a lot of money fast. This is a very popular squeeze page. Make money and change your life now. Blah, 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 blah. Check availability. Do you know how much this offer pays for every lead I send? That particular lead will pay me $110 for a U.S. lead, a U.K. lead, an Australia lead, a Canada, New Zealand, do you realize they pay $110 for every person I can get through their funnel? Do y'all think that's kind of an incentive for me to like get some people into their funnel? It's an insane the I mean to me they want to they they're looking for work at home people. Which guess what? There's no shortage of that. There's simply no shortage of that in any way shape or form. $110 per lead. Okay. How many people in here are familiar with Facebook? I think we all are. This offer pays $1.65 for everybody who I can get to vote for yes or no. I like Twitter and I like Facebook. Which one's your favorite, Facebook or Twitter? I don't really care. I just want the $1.65. Do you think that's a bad deal to get somebody just to opt into somebody else's list for $1.65? Does anybody think that really is a bad deal? Probably not. I'm, yeah. And guys, guess what? People love sharing their opinions. Do you know anybody who shares their opinion even though you wish they wouldn't? I think we all know people like that. I mean, I always have aunts and uncles that want to tell me the opinion, like, you know, like, 
hey, Charles, I don't think you should be doing this, make money online stuff, because, you know, the Internet's, you know, like totally fake and, uh, you know, it's a fraud and, you know, you might not make any money. I always have aunts and uncles telling me that kind of stuff. Okay, here's an example of selling something called the Diet Solution. It pays $41.47 per sale. It's via ClickBank, by the way. Do you think it's really difficult to sell a book on how to lose weight to people who are interested in losing weight? If I took this to the Cattlemen's Association, I probably couldn't sell – lose money. I mean I'd lose money big time. Couldn't sell you know, how to lose weight. But you know what? If I took this to a mom site, that a mom who just had a baby, and she sees this lady who just had a baby, and she's like, looks like she never had any, you know, never had a baby. Do you think that'd be a hard sell to get moms to, you know, want to do that? It's really not a hard sell. Really not a hard sell. Quick question: This is actually a ClickBank offer. Pays thirty-one dollars and fifty-one cents. It's about making money online. Do you think if I pop this ad or this page on top of another website about making money online, it would be a hard, it would, do you think it would take much con, much convincing for somebody to say, hey, I'd, I'd like to check this ad out? Doesn't take much convincing on anybody's part. Okay? Here's another one. I mean, let's face it. A little kid wrapped up in an American flag. I mean, guys, if, if you don't find that patriotic, if that doesn't tug at your hearts, you most likely don't have a pulse. This offer pays $2.40 for people interested in getting an insurance quote. Do you think it, if you pop this up on a site about getting insurance quotes that they would probably be interested in taking this, taking me up on the American insurance offer? They only need to opt in. That's it. The key to making PPV work is to either be hyper-targeted or go really, really, really broad. Does that make sense? Go really broad or go super hyper-targeted. Now, this is actually a squeeze page I have. Big giant button. Guess what? You don't have to do it. How many times have you ever seen people like with really, 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 really fancy pages? You know, like with the flashing graphics and the people talking, I've done all that. But how many times have you seen stuff like that? You know, the beautiful e-cover books and stuff like that. I've I've tested everything under the sun to the tune of a little more than four million clicks in a week. You know what works best? A headline and a big button. Does that make sense? Would anybody like to guess why this page does so incredibly well? I'm going, give, I'm going to give everybody a very quick lesson in making squeeze pages. Why does this page do so well? Do you think it's because it's a beautiful button? It doesn't distract the person. When you go to these squeeze pages that have like the cover, you know, the ebook covers, do you realize your prospect has to judge whether they want to click or join your list based on the e cover? I don't know about you, but does anybody think modern art is beautiful? Some people do, some people don't. It's the same thing with their e-cover. <laughs> people make a judgment about it, and they go, you know, Charles, man, that's the I love that e-cover. Where Bob made love blue, you know what? Susan goes, man, I hate blue. My my ex-husband, his favorite color is blue. I hate blue. I'm never opting into this. But yet, she could be a perfect prospect. Does that make sense? <sighs> and it's really about the offer. Your offer is what drives everything. From start to finish, it's not about how pretty your graphics are. It's not how big your button is. Well, actually, it is in a way. But um, but does that make sense? It's about the offer. What is the offer? Giant headline. Quick question. Have y'all ever seen people with these like anemic little buttons? Have y'all ever seen like these little opt-in pages where you get the word submit? How many people have seen those pages with the word submit? Little gray button on the you know size 11 font. Well, let me let me be honest with you. You double your button size. Guess what? You double your income. Does anybody think this button is a little out of proportion for the rest of the page? Just asking. Who thinks my button is a little out of proportion for the rest of the page? It is. You know what? 
Because I want it to stand out. What do I want it to say? Let me in. Do you think a little gray submit button would get lost down there? Does anybody remember Sir Mix-a-Lot? You might remember a rap song called Baby Got Back. I like big buttons and I cannot lie. Anybody remember that? Well, that applies here, guys. It absolutely applies. The bigger your button, the more money you can make. Does that make sense? Does everybody agree with me, and does everybody follow me at this point? Squeeze page pops up out of nowhere. Bob's over here surfing at uh, MLM.org. Charles's page pops up. I'll promise. You know, I'll show you how to make a gazillion and a half dollars. And there's a giant button that says "Yes, let me in." Bob's got like three and a half seconds to realize: Do I want to opt in or not? He sees the button that says "Let me in." And guys, am I just, you know, the button is big. That's what it works. The button is big. Big buttons work. Bigger your button, more money you can make. I'm just saying. You know, shake the button maker is what you need to be doing. Now let's go ahead and show an example. This is a key term I think everybody should be familiar with. Is everybody familiar with the word email marketing? I think we are. I'm not, I don't really need to ask that. I know we are. We're all familiar with email marketing. And let's say that we go to Google and we type in email marketing. Because you know what? I, th does anybody want some of those email marketing leads? Just ask me. Could anybody use some leads for people looking for email marketing? Most likely, yes. Type this into Google and you come up with what? Constant contact, eye contact, AWeber, vertical sales. Are all these like really big branded companies? Does anybody know? You know, does anybody see like a mom and pop in here in any way, shape, or form? Do you see like Bob's email list building or anything like that? You don't. No, you don't. You don't. All you see is big major corporations who have stupid amounts of money to spend. And do you realize the big corporations can squeeze out the little guy? The little guy's got no chance getting up here. You go to Google, you type in email marketing, Google says, yes, we'll give you that term for $33.11 per click. Does that effectively like rule you out from ever being able to bid on affiliate marketing, I mean email marketing with Google? Even if you had an email marketing service, you still could not bid. You couldn't because, you know, Google's like, man, unless you got a few thousand dollars to drop with us today, you better take your stuff and go have a fun day. Now, I'm going to show you this is Traffic Dance, the same term, email marketing and Traffic Dance. Do you realize the highest bid is, see this dot? That's a penny. That's a dollar. That's a ten. That's a one. Quick little math lesson here. Do you realize for one a penny and a seventh of a penny, I could get a pop-up for the keyword email marketing. Is everybody with me at this point? Does everybody see the potential? Guys, I want some yeses and nos. If you don't say, go, Charles, I'm not following you at all. You lost me. You're totally insane. You know, don't know why Matt ever lets you on here. You, you know, what you do, hack into a system or something. Um, does it, think about that. Now, let's. I'm, we're going to even go one further. One step further here. Constant contact is number one. Did everybody see that? Constant contact is number one. Okay. Constant contact in traffic vans, I can pop up on top of their site for a penny and an eighth. I can pop up on top of eye contact for three cents. For some reason, eye contact costs more than constant contact. I have no clue why. I can just tell you it costs three cents. That's the highest bid. One person bidding on email marketing. I don't know about you, but well, actually, I'll tell you, I can tell you who that one person is. But you could probably guess at this point who that one person is. Does anybody begin to see the anybody begin to see the potential here? Does anybody see the potential? Let, let's even go further. You can go for AdWords, and you can pay thirty-three dollars and eleven cent per click. And I hope you've got a bank loan, or hope you've got a startup fund, because you're going to probably blow through a few million dollars. And I promise you. Google is more than happy to take your money on any day. Just telling you, Google is happy to do it. Okay, or you can do CPV for a penny and a seventh. Let's just round it up to two pennies. Just make it easy math here, guys. Do you realize I can get 1,947 page views 
for $33.11. So tell me, which one do you want? Do you want one page view from Google AdWords? Because we all know how high quality Google is. You can get one click with Google AdWords or the 1,947. And guess what? The guy that goes to Google AdWords, I'm going to pop up for the word email marketing. Do you think that there's a... Do you think the guy who gets a pop up for email marketing, or if I pop up on top of constant contact, do you think that guy is different from the person that I don't know, maybe tried to Google constant contact or email marketing? Do you think that maybe they're any different? They're not. They're not. This the same people. Email marketing. Now think about this. Have you ever wanted to get into a market and build a list, but you couldn't get in because, A, you know, let's face it, Google's not playing our game anymore. Do you realize when all the Google slaps happen, you know what Charles is doing when the Google slaps happen? I'm like, boy, I bet that really sucked. I bet that's the start of a bad day. Huh, I wonder if I can get some more traffic. Now, do you think you could make some money with getting some people who are even remotely, I mean even slightly ever remotely list, interested in email marketing. As a matter of fact, I think Matt has an email marketing course that you could possibly promote to these people as well. Okay, is everybody, because I, I read this point, I'm just going over the concept. We haven't even got into the nitty-gritty yet, but it's everybody following the concept of what we're talking about. Your squeeze page pops up on top of somebody else's site. It can be based on keywords like we see here, or it can be based on URLs. Okay. Now, if you've ever gotten this from Google, do you think this causes you to have a bad day? Do you think this would cause you to have like a really bad day? Good morning from Google. You're screwed. Have a good day. We don't care about you. Bye. It's called the monkey slap or the Google slap. And guess what? Do you think Google cares that maybe you're trying to build a business and try – do you think Google cares if you're trying to do things legit? No, they don't care. You're, you're just another person who, according to Google, was a bad apple. Let's face it. Trying to make extra money, we're bad apples. You know, <sighs> Google maybe should give us some money instead of giving us free Gmail or something. I don't know. But this is what Google says. We don't care about you. So you're going to tell you where everybody messes stuff up. Quick question, does you want to know where everybody messes stuff up? Have you ever been told to go pick a niche? I'm asking, has anybody ever told you to go pick a niche? Okay. That makes sense. That that makes sense. Do you realize they're only half right? I want to give you an example. Let's say our niche is shark fishing, right? We want to be shark fishers. Let's just say for whatever we reason. We want to catch jaws. That so shark fishing would be our niche, right? We picked a niche. Do you realize if we go to our local field and throw out all our big shark fishing tackle, or we throw it in a local stream? Do you think you're going to catch any sharks anywhere around there? Are you going to are you ever going to catch sharks? Other than your neighbors riding by laughing at you because you look like an idiot, <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere. But but our niche is shark fishing, so so let's apply it to online internet marketing here. People tell you to pick a niche. My niche is make money online. Well, that's great. Do you realize picking the niche was the easy thing? Do you ever think that you're trying to take a square peg and beat it into a round hole? Has anybody ever thought about that with internet marketing? You're beating a square peg into a round hole. You can beat it all you want. I mean, you can beat the ever-living daylights out of it. You can steamroll it. You can take a hammer. You can gnaw at it. You can you can give it to your cat. He can use it as a scratching post, but it will not. You cannot put a peg inside a hole. It just ain't gonna happen. You know what? Do you want to know what would be much easier to do? I mean, do you want to know what the real easy, simple, simple solution is? The simple solution is go find your traffic first. Think about this, guys. If you find your traffic source first, guess what? I go to WeightWatchers.com. What do the people at Weight Watchers want? To lose weight. Do you think it would be easy selling a weight loss product, maybe even a weight loss pill to Weight Watch to, to people who are going to WeightWatchers.com? Does anybody think you could 
potentially even do that. Just asking. I mean, I'm just asking. You may say, Charles, no, I just don't think I can do it. But I'm going to get a sip of water. I'm going to mute my headset for about 10 seconds while I drink water. And I want you to think about that. And, guys, I want you to agree or disagree because, hey, I'm totally up for anything here. If you agree, say yes. If you don't agree, say, Charles, I don't think I can agree with you. And guys, let me apologize. I have to keep muting my headset because I ended up with a cold and got this nasty cough. I'm trying to get rid of it. So does everybody think finding the traffic source first and then figuring what in the world they want to buy would be easier than trying to take a shark fishing product and shove it down the throat of a field? A good example would be like trying to sell a vegetarian product to cattle ranchers. You can do all you want. You may occasionally get lucky, get the one get the one cattle rancher who is a vegetarian. Um, but I can tell you for a fact, it's a hard uphill climb. So think about this, guys. Step one in this entire plan to get massive amounts of traffic. You can bid on domains and you can bid on keywords. Do you think you could find relevant keywords based on whatever you'd like to promote? Does anybody think you could find relevant keywords and domains? I mean, I promise you. If you just look through your history right now, and guys, you may have something embarrassing, so if you've got family members around, don't do it until you've got some privacy. But if you look through your history on your browser, this is funny, do you think you probably could find some targets, maybe some domains you go to? Just asking. Do you think you could find some domains? Occasionally. I mean, like maybe one or two, like I don't know, Better Networker, Maximum Leverage, MLM Secrets. Do you think you could use some of those people's buyers and some of those people's? I think we could all come up with plenty of domains. Okay. Do you think you could come up with some keywords? And in case anybody gets stuck with Charles, I can't think. I could never think of a keyword. Take a domain, go plug it into the Google AdWords tool, and it'll like tell you the keyword tool. It'll tell you all the keywords related to that domain. Does that make sense? So what do you do? You do you find the domains first to have traffic, and then figure out what you like to sell them? Take those domains and then find the keywords based on those domains. I think we I think we could all do it. Warning, warning, warning. Because this is such so much traffic, you have to laser target it. Do you, does anybody remember earlier I said there are only two ways to do it: to go super hyper targeted or to go really, really broad? Does anybody remember that little nugget I dropped? If not, you need to write it down because it's very important. If you're not careful, you can get too much traffic to your site. You could use a very broad type keyword, and you could end up crashing your server. I mean, let's think about it. Is it really about the traffic, or is it about the conversions? If anybody says traffic, they need to really sit down and rethink this. It's not about the traffic. It's about the conversions. So you need to start with domains first, but it's even better if you start with a domain with a keyword. Has anybody ever noticed that a lot of domains that have the keyword in it pretty much relate to what the, the keyword is? Does that make sense? If you go to dogfancy.com, you're not expecting to see cats, are you? You expect to see dogs. You don't expect to see cats. Guys, targeted traffic equals money. I'm going to show you something here. If I'm going to show you a little tool in a little bit, but just think about this. If you were to find domains that had your keyword in it, they would probably be hyper-targeted, right? MLM Secrets is about what? MLM. Better Networker is about what? Network Marketing. Everybody's, does everybody agree with me on that? And for the fact that most people pick it, unless you're Amazon or you're just picking a name because it sounds cool, like Blue Lithium, most people pick a domain. And guys, answer this question. How many people in this call have a domain that they own that has their keyword in the domain of what they're selling or what they're promoting? Who has that? I'm just asking. I'm going to prove a point. Shane says he does. John says yes. John says many of them. Sarah says yes. Melody says yes. Grant says no. But, but most people have a keyword with their, in their domain. Even if it's your name, I can bid on your name. Okay. 
so do you, does that, that make sense to everybody? If you bid on hyper-targeted domains, you can get hyper-targeted traffic. Okay? Now let's talk about the first step we can direct link. Now, let's just say, can I, would y'all mind if I use Matt as an example here? I mean, it's your call, guys. If you don't want me to use Matt as an example, I won't. I simply won't. But, but would you mind if I used him as an example? Okay, go ahead. Okay, that cool. Somebody says no, don't use them as an example. No problem. Some use and abuse. Dude, David, man, cold. Okay. Make money online. Make money online. Who's typing make money online? The newbie, right? Because remember the new that I mean, that's what the newbie types. I want to make money online. Let's make some money. That sounds good. That's cool for everybody. Where does he show up? Well, number one, when I took this picture of Google, it says number one is a hundred and one ways to make money corresponds to make money online. So do you think this guy who's at number one listing in Google gets some traffic about making money online? He visits Make Money Online. Everything is good. Life is good. He's got AdWare on his computer, by the way. Boom. Match up the offer 100%. Do you realize I could, I could pop up the squeeze page off SMC directly on top of this page? And this, do you think this matches the intent of the buyer or the intent of the person coming to 101 Ways to Make Money? It makes it exactly. And Matt's offer would have worked fine for this, I would believe. Because he wants to make money. He wants to start a home-based business. Maximum leverage would work good for this. Futuristic marketer, which is just being promoted, would not work. You want to know why it would not work? Is and I don't have futuristic market. Didn't buy it. Um, I saw that it was being promoted. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's a great product, but I don't really buy many products. But hey, quick question: Who here has futuristic market? I'm just asking. Okay, a lot of people did. I figured you probably did. Um, I know. I really know nothing about it. Um, but is it geared to the guy that wants to make money online? Who just typed that in? Is the guy who just typed that in going to spend four hundred ninety-five dollars with you right now? Probably not. It's kind of like dating. Now, if we walked up, let's, I'm gonna give you a good example. And this is this is something that can make or break your profit. You just have to believe me, and you have to follow me. And let's say that we, we're going on a date. We we go up. We 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 meet a girl at a local. Let's say we meet at local charity event. We meet some girl. If you walk up to her and go. Baby, you're beautiful. I want to have two kids with you in a white picket fence. What What do you think she would do to you, most likely? You immediately walk up to a guy or a gal, husband, wife, significant other, and say, I want to have two kids, and let's live somewhere. She's going to slap the ever-living crap out of you, or either laugh at you and think that's the worst pickup line you've ever used. Right? Okay. What would happen if you walked to him and said, "Hey, you know, I noticed you've been working really hard here. You know, would you like a Gatorade? I brought one over for you. Would you, you know, would you like a Gatorade?" Do you think she'd be a little more receptive? Do you realize we, we've only we've taken a small step? Do you think she would say, "Oh man, thank you. You know, I've been sweating my behind off. I'm glad somebody noticed it. Yeah, you know, well, not noticed the behind, but you know, you probably did. But anyway, um, but does everybody follow me at that point? <laughs> we take small steps. And maybe after we take the small step, we go, hey, here's my phone number. Um, you know, what are you doing after this? You know, I've got some friends of mine. We're going to be going over, hanging out, watching the game. Would you like to come out? Well, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. She gets over there, and then, you know, you start talking, and then maybe you give her a call back. Do you realize we just take incremental steps in building that relationship? And then one day we get to the point where we get husband and wife, significant other. That's what you need to do with your pop-ups. You realize most people pop up something and they go, buy my crap now. Buy my crap now. Buy, buy, buy. Do you think that works with somebody who does not know you? Somebody who doesn't know you, they're like, man, scammer. Can't believe the internet's full of these people. You know, where's my anti scam button? I'll hit the spam button in his email. I'll show him. That's what happens. So well, lesson number one, guys, what do you need to do if you pop up on a hyper-relevant site? What, is, what do you need to do? Do you need to look at, think through the intent of the user and find something that matches what he or she wants? Does everybody agree with that? Okay. 
so we're all agreeing with that, right? Match the user intent. You, if the user came to buy something, well, guess what? We're going to be there. But if he's looking for information, we also need to be there. Okay? Step two, squeeze pages. Okay? Make money online. He's going to make money online. He's coming here. He comes to the site. I'm going to make money online. I'm going to make me some monies. Boom! What do we pop up a squeeze page? What are we doing with the squeeze page? We're just trying to build that list, right? Is everybody with me at this point? When that squeeze page pops up, we're not asking him to make a major commitment in life. We're asking, here's a headline, here's an opt-in button, and here's some security seals, which you should take those off because they actually decrease conversion, but that's a whole new story. But, but is everybody following me? We can actually pop up just that incremental step, or we can pop up a squeeze page and build a list, and, and we can work on these people incremental. Do you think it would be difficult to build a list of brand new people who are interested in making money online? Maybe, maybe before this webinar, you said, man, Charles, I just can't do it. Just don't, don't think I can do it. After watching so what you've learned at this point, do you think it would be difficult? And, I, guys, I have nothing to sell you. So I, I know somebody's going, well, Charles, I bet you're going to, like, pull a, pull a bait and switch here, and it's going to be, like, you know, the gazillion-dollar course. No, it's nothing like that. I'm just asking, after watching this, do you think you could find some URLs that you could potentially target with your squeeze page? And guys, if you go, Charles, I don't want to use a squeeze page, can't do a squeeze page, don't worry about it. Direct link to somebody else who has a squeeze page. I'm sure Matt will create a squeeze page for you if you ask him if you're going to send him a few thousand clicks a day. I promise you they have an affiliate program geared to that somewhere along the line. Just saying. Okay. Let's think of it from this standpoint. Do you think this page looks intimidating? Do you think this page like has a lot of forms to fill out? Dude lands on this. Do you think this squeeze page would scare the ever living daylights out of me? This page pop ups. It wants my name, my email, my phone, my address, my city, my state, my zip code, you know, note from my grandmother, my doctor's record, and probably a sample of my DNA. Terrifying, isn't it? Is this a little easier to look at? All I'm asking here is give me your email. I'm not even asking for a name. We, you know, I'm just bringing the girl with Gatorade at this point. She's hot. She's sweaty. This is not a wet t shirt contest. And I'm bringing her a Gatorade. This is why this is. You make small incremental steps. You don't want to start. How many times have you, do you think have, have you seen pages like this and you go, I don't want to. Too much stuff. Too much stuff. I don't want to do all this. Yuck. It's intimidating. You don't do these kind of pages. So step one, guys, is start with domains first. And I've already said this, but start with domains have your keyword in it. Software tool I've got. Um, think about this. What would be the first thing we want to look at? If we and guys, you can go get a copy of the Alexa One Million. Just go to Alexa, click on they have what's called Hot. Click on where it says Hot, and guess what? You download One Million websites and you can query through it. Okay. Think about this. What would you want to do? You're in the elect. You got the Alexa One Million at your fingertips, and you can query through it. Would you enter? I mean, and remember, we've got a million domains. So, do you think it'd be very easy to get like probably too many domains if we weren't careful? Who thinks we could potentially enter in like way too many domains? It, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you. It's very easy to end up with like way too many domains. Cause you can, it will cause you to have a bad day in a lot of different ways. Okay, you enter your keyword, and I. Does anybody want to guess why I started with money? Does anybody want to guess why I started with money? It is the low and lowest common denominator I can find that everything else is I want to make money, make money online, get money, make extra money, get a business. You know, there are a lot of things we can look at, but what a money money is just that common denominator. If you type in money, you get 1,596 websites that have the word money in it. Now do you think that's probably like maybe just a little bit – do you think that's maybe just like too many websites to deal with? Just asking. I mean is that kind of a little bit of too – I mean it's it's a little too many I think honestly. Well, is everybody familiar with what's called the Alexa ranking? And if you're not, I'm going to explain it to you. Alexa is a toolbar. It's a thing, thing owned by Amazon, and it says we like to rate how much traffic a site has. Alexa ranking of one would be like Facebook or Google. 
a likes a ranking of 99,000 or you know a million would be some dude who's got a site who's clicked on it two times and that's two times for him. Does that make sense? The lower your Alexa ranking, the more traffic you're supposed to be getting, if that makes sense. So with that, if a site, let's say my, mymobilepages.com, if that has an Alexa ranking of 2,473, do you think it's getting like a lot of traffic? Who thinks that's getting a lot of traffic? It's getting a boatload of traffic, actually. It's getting really quite a bit of traffic. Okay, now, we, nobody came to this call to do math tonight, but statistically speaking, remember, we this stuff works on somebody who puts adware on the computer, right? Statistically thinking, speaking, do you think the guy that you'd have a larger percentage of people who go to my, my mobile pages, do you think uh, statistically they would have more a better chance to have adware on the computer than, you know, Alexa ranking of 1 million? Do you think, statistically speaking, they get more traffic so they have a greater possibility of having somebody with adware? And David's agreeing, and the truth is, it is. Now, what you want to do is you take these domains and you go through them. And basically, you just kind of copy and paste. And you can you don't have to have this thing. You can do it with the Alexa. You can download the Alexa database from free from Google, and you can just use Excel. A quick question, can everybody at least use Excel? I can't. That's why I had to have a tool built because I can't use it. But 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 most people can use it. Okay. Now just imagine if you took all that. Do you imagine if you took 1,596 domains, cleaned them up, and maybe you only want to do 20, 30, 50 at a time that were like money pages that related to what you were looking for. Take those domains and put them in your traffic account. Does that make sense? And I'm not. I'm gonna get to the part traffic. I just want to kind of cover step one. Basically, find your domains. Do you think that's an easy way to find your domains by querying the Alexa one million and getting these sites? It's very easy, by the way. Okay. You go to some place like Media Traffic. Now, Media Traffic. These are people that have the adware on people's computer. They own the adware, and they go, you know what? We have so much traffic. We have problems getting rid of it. Does it, does, is everybody familiar with supply and demand? Like Google has like a huge supply, huge demand. They can charge like ever-loving boatloads of money. Problem with this stuff that I'm using is there's a huge supply of it. Do you realize there's not much demand because peop, most people don't know about it? I mean, I, mean I, I promise you there's a lot of people in this call right now who are probably going, I've never heard of this, but it sounds interesting. Okay. I want you to think about this. International traffic starts at one dollar per thousand. Think about that. They'll give you a thousand of these page pop-ups for a dollar. Do you think they may have more traffic than they can possibly handle? Average Joe doesn't know anything about this. Average Joe's going, I've never heard of this media traffic stuff. Maybe it's a scam. Never heard of that. Can't believe they want money for advertising. <laughs> Craziest thing ever heard on the internet. Just insane. Does that make sense? The fact that you don't have a lot of other crazy people competing against you. Here's another one. Here's Lead Impact. I really enjoy these guys, by the way. And it's the same scenario. They have so much traffic, they have trouble selling it. They can't get rid of all the traffic. Do you think? And here's another one, Direct CPV. There again, they have a boatload of traffic. You know what they have trouble doing? Selling it. Do, do you think that maybe presents something maybe favorable circumstances for? I mean, do, does anybody think that's a favorable circumstance for us? It's very favorable. Then on the other side of that, with Google, when they go, we like thirty-one dollars and eleven cent per click for email marketing. Well, these different networks have more traffic than they can possibly do anything with. As a matter of fact. So it's crazy stuff like this that allows people like me and you to arbitrage the system. Step two, this is where people don't really do anything. If you've got 1,500 domains, do you think you need to track which one's making you money? I'm just asking. Let me come over here. I'm going to actually start up the software in a second here. 
Do you think if you had 1,500 domains, do you think you would need to track where each one's, you know, where each one's coming from? Do you think you could even remotely keep up with even 1,500 money-making domains that you're bidding on? You can't. You simply can't. That's why you have to use tracking like this. I'm oh, sorry. You have to use some type of tracking. I don't use. The, I use a different tracking system, but basically, you have to use some kind of tracking system to tell you how many clicks you got, how many leads you got, how much money did you make. Does that make sense? Now I've got campaigns with over seven thousand URLs in them, and if you're not using tracking software, it's like I mean, just imagine if you had a fifty-pound bowl of pasta and you tried to find the end of every noodle, it'd be impossible. You can use free hosted tracking. You can direct link if you don't have a server or, you know, take what's working and scale it. Does that make sense? If you track your opt-ins, your leads, your sales, your conversions, you can find out what's working and then, you know, get more of those domains, right? I mean, would you want to have 50 domains that were converting, making you, making sales, making you leads, or would you rather have 5,000 domains that were doing nothing? Only way you can do it is to track the stuff. Okay. Step three: If you're making money in one niche, what would you do? I'm I'm just asking. What would you do if you were making money in one niche? Come on, somebody. What would you do if you were if you were actually making money? Oh, sorry about that. Some people would stay there. Potentially even pour more. You know, make more money in it. Do it over again. Now remember, these traffic networks have more traffic than they can even sell you. So do you think maybe you'd want to get into like any other niches as an affiliate? Maybe rinse, repeat, do it over again. Maybe scale it up. Does that make sense? Would anybody like to be able to scale up their profits? Maybe go into different niches. Now, quick question. How do you scale things up? What's an easy way to scale things up? Everybody, has everybody ever heard of that where you just scale things up? Of course, you scale things up. It's kind of like like being born and knowing how to ride a bicycle, or being a, you know being born and being able to do quadratic equations. You scale it up because you're tracking stuff. You know what's working. You know what's making money, and then you start putting up squeeze pages, and then you put in follow up emails. Quick question: How many people find it hard to make squeeze pages? Just ask. Just just total side note: How many people have trouble making squeeze pages? Okay. Well, guess what? There are plenty of software products out there that will do it for you. Optimize Press, tons of them. You can buy them. You can outsource them. Not a big deal. Okay. You can, you know how hard would it be to make a squeeze page that had a headline and a giant button? Do you think that may, that would make it easier? No, no silly graphics. No talking heads. No people walking out onto the screen. Um, you know, no crazy stuff like that. Just a headline and a buy button. Really, 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 really simple. Make it easy. Okay. Now, what happens when you get people on your list? Remember, what is this about? We want to make a lot of money. We're going to put people on our list. We're going to sell them other products. What happens when most people – how many people have got somebody on their list? I'm just quickly asking, how many people have somebody on their list? How many people have a list? Most people probably have a list. Okay, a few. You know what most people do? Most people mail their list like once or twice a week because have you ever thought you didn't want to like intrude upon your list? Just just ask you. It doesn't make a difference whether it's big or small. Have you ever felt like you didn't want to intrude upon your list? You, know, you don't want to bother them. Guess what? They opted into your list. You didn't force them to opt in. You didn't say, you know, opt in or the bunny rabbit's going to get it. We're going to be feeding it to the, you know, the bunny rabbit people. I don't know. Just whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. If you get somebody on your list, don't be afraid to mail them. Mail them, mail them, mail them. You know what my you know what my theory is? Mail them until they buy or they die. I've had both happen. Does anybody think that would be a good a good thing for you to have? To maybe start mailing more and more people. Because guess what? The day you don't mail, repeat this one, the day you don't mail is the day you don't get paid. Now, say that with me. The day you don't mail is the day you don't get paid. Has anybody ever thought of it like that, by the way? The day you mail is the day you don't get paid. 
and I don't know about you, but I like I like getting these daily paychecks. It it, it kind of it's it's addictive. It's kind of a good thing, by the way. Okay. Quick question: Does anybody think three thousand people is a big list or small list? I'm just asking. Just just quick question. Who thinks that's big or small list? It's very 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 very. My total list is about one hundred eighty eight thousand. You know what? What comes interesting is if you take your list and you've got it in different niches, and maybe even inside these different niches, you mail these little segmented niches. Do you think you would make more money mailing segments of your niche exactly what they want? Or do you think you'd make more money just sending out a general broadcast email to everybody? Who thinks you'd make more money Mailing a segment of your list exactly what what they want. Okay, everybody's agreeing with me. Quick question. On average, and I'm just asking, let's look at this. How many people do you know walk around with a 45% open rate? How many people have ever got a 45% open rate on a broadcast? Just just asking a 45% out. Okay. Let's look at this. How many people get a 59.8% open rate on a broadcast? And you see we're sending it to 3,000 people. And you know, If you send it to two people, that's like you go, well, you know, Charles, you send it to two people, and you were one of the two, and you opened the email, so therefore, you no, no, this is going out to 3,000 people. Okay. Do you realize I know guys, and I'm sure Matt does too, I know people that have over 100,000 people on their list that could not get you 1,000 clicks a day if their life depended on it. Does that make sense? And I know Matt, if he, if he chimes in, I'm sure he could agree with me. We all know people like that. I know people that have monster lists that have that cannot get a could not get you 1,200, and now all I am or something who could not get you 1,200 clicks if their life depended on it. I know people with a hundred thousand who couldn't get 2,000 opens. Does that make sense? So why? What do I do that can get these people to open their emails? And I already alluded to what the magic was. What do I do that can get such crazy high open rates? Well, yeah, other than the fact that they know me, it's because I send them quality content and I segment the stuff out. Does that make sense? When you learn to start segmenting your list like this, you can – I mean, now just imagine if you had 10 different lists or 10 different segments. What would happen if you had 10 lists and 10 segments like this? Do you – I mean, let's look at this as an example. 1,753 clicks from 3,400 people. Do you think you'd have the ability to make just a tiny bit of money from it? I mean, even I mean, just a tiny little bit of money. I mean, everybody's agreeing you could make probably a, a, enough pen, enough pennies to pay a bill or two. Just ask him. What would happen if I? Quick question: What would happen if I mailed everybody on the list the exact same offer? What would happen? We'd get less opens, and the list would get pretty PO'd pretty quickly. Going to prove a point to you. Going to prove a point. Would anybody like to play along with this to play prove a point? How many emails do you get a day? A lot. I mean, give me a number. Okay, I see a lot of numbers coming through, a bunch of numbers here. Okay, we're cool with that. How many, you know, if somebody sends you crap all the time, do you unsubscribe from their list or do you stay on it? I see unsubscribe, I see unsubscribe, I say it depends. I say unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Okay. It's not the frequency that you mail people. That's where I think a lot of people make a mistake. They go, oh, gosh, I got to mail every day. If you mail every day, you, you'll, you'll, you'll be far better off. But a lot of people end up mailing every day just for the fact that they want to mail every day, not because they're delivering content. Does that make sense? 
if you deliver content, if you deliver some story-based email, which I've noticed Matt does consistently, you can have high open and click rates. Does it make sense? But if I send you an email every day that says go buy my stuff, buy my stuff with, you know, just have y'all ever seen those emails like come buy my crap, come buy your crap, like two line, the little two line sequence emails? Have you ever seen those? And it's like, you know, it's kind of like like they're penalized for like, gosh, you know, if you write more than two paragraphs, the the email police are to come and like, you know, get, beat you down or something. Don't know about you, but I don't want to beat down by the email police. Got to fight Google. Had to do that's bad enough. Definitely don't want the email police showing up. No telling what they're going to do. So most people send emails like that. They're terrified to write. You know what happens when you send emails that actually tell people a story? That entertain them? What happens? Come on, guys. You're on Matt's list. I know you know what kind of emails he sends. They read it. They, they like you. They trust you. Do, quick question. We're, I'm going to prove a point. Maybe I don't need to prove this point. But does everybody trust and know and like Matt? Yeah, obviously you do. Does everybody get an email from him every day? Quick question. Does everybody get an email from him every day? Good quality stuff. I mean, you know, just about, maybe not. I mean, to be honest with you guys, I'm not even in MLM. I train a bunch of people in MLM, do a bunch with um, helping a lot of guys in the Empower Network. Um, but I open and read Matt's emails. For some strange reason, I open and read his emails. I know the dude had some kind of medicine that he couldn't jog. I also know they used to cut grass. Do you realize? I, I mean, guys, I do a stupid amount of money every day, and yet I read his emails. I'm like, dude, I don't know, I don't know what he's up to. Does that make sense? Does everybody follow with that? I mean, we have days where we can blow through $144,000 in three days. But yet, I still read Matt's emails because I'm like, what's the dude up to? Does that make sense? That's how it works. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this. Oh, sorry, let me – actually, let me pop this down here. I need to – I actually hit the end button instead of the wrong button here. Let me find it. Let me find it. Just bear with me here. Okay, perfect. Okay. Now, would you all like to have some fun? Would anybody like to have some crazy, crazy fun? And, and before we get going, guys, did everybody learn something tonight? I'm just asking, did everybody learn something tonight? If you didn't learn something, you know, just say, Charles, man, you're the most boringest webinar presenter I've ever seen. I can't believe Matt let you on here. Did everybody at least get some value? I mean, some value. I mean, if nothing else, at least maybe you laugh at my southern accent. I don't know. Hope you got some value out of this. And guys, this is stuff that most people have never heard. Okay. Y'all want to? Who do y'all want to pick on tonight? Give me the name of a marketer. Give me the name of a website you like to have some fun with. I'm going to show y'all how we can do some crazy PPV stuff right now. Matt, you could even chime in if you want to do that. Give me the name of a marketer you'd like to have some fun with. Come on, guys. I get Russell Brunson. I get Mike Dillard. I got Ray Higdon, Jonathan Budd, Mark Overson, Amway, Mike Dillard, Dagan. I, Dagan's man. I can't do that to him. Brett, Rob, Dave, Greg. Matt, let's see, let's see if Matt's on here. I'm, I'm, we're going to play a crazy game. Matt, can you hear me, my friend? No, don't do Charles Kirkland. That, nah, we don't want to do anything Charles Kirkland related. Can you hear me, Charles? I can, I can. <laughs> we're going to play a game, Matt. Tell yep. me the marketer that you would like to get some leads from. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go Jonathan Budd. Okay. I was just at his place on the weekend, but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect, we'll perfect, Jonathan. perfect. I have never met him. I, I, I should. I've got some buddies who know him. Obviously, you know him. But um, we're going to have some fun. Now, guys, I want you to understand, we, we probably should have a disclaimer at this point because what I'm going to show you will probably cause somebody to have some issues tonight sleeping. If anybody can lay down after the end of this webinar, I probably failed you miserably. And so if, if you need to like get off because you got to go to work tomorrow morning, you need to get off now because what I'm going to show you is going to cause 
you to get really, really, really excited. Okay. Um, let's type in Jonathan Bud here. Jonathan Bud B U D. And as you can tell, I certainly cannot spell. Perfect, perfect. JonathanBud.com. Okay. We are going to open up our handy dandy little notepad because we're we're going to have lots of fun tonight. Um, let's see, Jonathan Bud. Okay. What else can we do to have fun? What do we need to know about Mr. Jonathan Bud? Actually, let me let me log into a different site. Give me one second, guys. I'm open up a browser here, um, and we're gonna log into a different site. And I'm going to show you that we're we're only and we, guys, remember we're doing this in clean fun, right? Is everybody with me? Is everybody gonna do this in clean? You know, because I don't want anybody like you know going out tomorrow going, boy, you know, can't wait. You just won't believe what's gonna happen. We only make sure we use this in an ethical ethical manner, right? Everybody's agreeing in an ethical manner. Totally agree in ethical, you know, just in fun. It's kind of like, you know, you buy stuff and they go, oh, you can't really use it. It's it's only in, in you know, the most ethical manner. Okay. We have Jonathan Bud. Let's grab his site. And let's plug it into the domain scraper here. Give it a second. One keyword per line, Jonathan Bud. And let's go... Does anybody think you can get international traffic, by the way? Would anybody like to get international traffic? I'm going to tell you, you make more money from international traffic than you will ever make from U.S. traffic. But but let's just say U.S. And But we're not done yet. What, what else would Jonathan Budd have? Maybe MLM Secrets? Hmm, I need to double-check I can spell this right. Guys, if y'all have been on Charles webinar, you know spelling is not my strong point. Let's come over here. What else can we find? Oh, good, good. Jonathan Bud, Jonathan Bud, scam, MLM, and well, let's just grab these two. That's fine. And he is not a scam. Jonathan Bud is highly respected, and it's one of those things I actually think he's probably one of the brighter marketers you'll ever get the opportunity to spend time with. And let's see, MLM secrets. MLM secrets. Okay. MLM secrets. Oh, online MLM secrets. Okay, I like this. I like this. Watch this. We're going to grab this right here. And you guys, I just want to say use what I'm going to teach you with caution because if you use it wrong, bad karma is going to happen to you. Okay, let me return that. I'm going to say let's go let's just go two pages deep. Is there is everybody okay with just scraping the first two pages? We could do five, but a lot of times with five, you get like you know stuff that's not really relevant. Let's say two pages, okay? And let's say U.S. for right now. Click on the search button here. Pray in my software it isn't blowing up because I've had that happen before. Okay, view links now. Vimeo, Jonathan Butt. Oh, Jonathan Butt TV. I didn't know he had that. Pretty cool. MySpace, Jonathan Butt. Ultimate bonus pack. Probably Matt product here. Jonathan Butt. John. Oh, coaching about. Do you think any of these are slightly related to MLM making money, even remotely? I mean, I'm just asking. Do you think it's even remotely related to making money? Okay. I think it is. This is what you want to do. What you want to do is go ahead and open these up in a little notepad here. Grab these. And let's go ahead and open up this one. We'll open this. And what you want to do is grab all these. And you want to paste them down into your little notepad. MLM, that looks good. Now, does anybody think bidding on these could even potentially get you any kind of traffic? I'm just, I'm just asking. Do you think any of these could even remotely be related to Jonathan Bud? Remotely, absolutely, could be. I mean, like blog Rob Force. I mean, home business product reports. And I mean, I mean, do you think you could build a pretty good list of MLM-related stuff doing this that you could bid on? Okay, I think we could. I, I think that potential is there. But what would what would be another word to describe Jonathan Bud? Do you think MLM would be a word that would fit Jonathan Bud? I mean, do you think he's in MLM training, coaching, stuff like that? Come on, Brett. Virginia says yes. Okay, MLM. Let's see what we can get. Wikipedia MLM. You might not want to do this because you know a lot of times people go into Wikipedia just like not really not your good stuff. 
MLM Ranking, MLM Watchdog, The Truth, MLM Insider. Do you think any of these would be remotely relevant to Jonathan Buddy? Anybody think it would be remotely relevant? Yeah, we'll grab some more domains here. And let's build this little puppy out. Okay, and we have to also go through because we know Yahoo Finance is not what we're looking for, right? Is everybody agreeing Yahoo Finance is not MLM? Are we okay with that? It's kind of like saying Amway, you know, is like, oh, I'm not going to knock anybody's product, so I better be quiet. Okay, let's have, but we're not done yet. Okay, let's go ahead and search the Alexa ranking. How many domains do you think have the word MLM in it? Remember, 1 million domains in Alexa. How many domains have the word MLM somewhere in that domain? We'll find out. 393 have the word ML in it. Okay? Is everybody with me? Everybody with me at this point. Now, guys, I have no clue what in the world diamond-mine-MLM is, but they got an Alexa ranking of 3,000. I'm going to say Alexa ranking of 4,000. Has anybody heard of something called MLM Lead System Pro? Just asking. I mean, I mean, you know, you you y'all know more than I do here. They have an Alexa ranking of sixty eight hundred. Online MLM secrets, Jonathan Bud property, right? Everybody's with me. Do you think you could bid on and and obviously go through these because not M, all of them are going to be you know what you're looking for? But do you think any of these would be pretty relevant? Any of them would be remotely relevant to me. You know, do you think if your stuff popped up on top of like online MLM secrets, you could probably, you know, maybe make a few leads? Just asking. Do you think you could get a few leads? Do you think that may be easier than a lot of other things you potentially have done in the past? I'm just asking. Okay. Okay. Would you all like to see something that would cause somebody to have a really, really bad day? I got a question for you, and if you answer it wrong, I'm going to kick you off the webinar. Do you want buyers on your list or you want prospects? Buyers? Okay, nobody's been kicked off yet. Everybody said, good, I, I, I don't really like kicking people off webinars. Okay, quick question. Who goes to the help desk? Matt, who goes to your help desk? People who bought. People who are already in the program. Okay. Would you rather target My Lead System Pro or would you rather type target an MLM help desk for leads? I'd rather target a help desk. So do you think a buyer lead would be more valuable to you than a prospect lead? Okay. So everybody's agreeing that would be a more valuable lead for me. Okay. Well, let's let's keep on going. I mean, I'm not one to give up lightly, and I don't think you are either. Um, ask my help desk. I have no clue what that is. MLM help desk. Oh, customer help desk. The customer support help desk. Colleen's help desk. Who uses help desk typically? The buyers. Okay. How about support? Because you know, I mean, we all we've all been to support thing. I, I had to go to a support thing yesterday because my shopping cart has some problems. Okay, let's see. This will not be an MLM example, but it will be one that will probably cause somebody to get excited. Has anybody heard of Acer computers? Just asking. You ever heard of Acer computers? Okay, who goes to the Acer support site? People who have Acer computers and most likely have a problem. They're not going there because their Acer computers running so fast. So what is the what is the mindset of somebody going to the Acer support desk? My computer's slow. I need to fix it up. What would you pop up on type of somebody on top of a website that is about how to fix your slow computer or a support desk for a computer? Need I'd pop up something about hey maybe you need to speed up your computer. Maybe you should back up your computer. Now let's take a leap of faith. I mean, I'm just asking you, would, would anybody take a leap of faith with me right now? Is anybody willing to take a leap of faith with Charles? I know we just met. We're moving fast here. We're getting to the marriage part in a second. But, is okay, everybody is taking a leap of faith with Charles. I'm going to ace of support because my computer is it's crawling. I can't understand what the problem is. Things going slow. 
maybe, I don't know, maybe, do you think maybe the person going to there because they've got computer problems could be convinced that they need an online backup system? My PC backup. Let's look at this. Do you see how much it's paying you per customer? Do you think at $170 per buyer, for every buyer I could get them for this thing, says free computer backup, sign up today. Do, do you even possibly think, possibly remotely think, the person who's going to the Acer support desk would probably need to back up their computer? I mean, I mean, do you do you think just by the room? I mean, I mean, just by the sheer name of that domain, they would be going there. Maybe you could have a squeeze page that says warning: you're about to lose your computer file. Click here to back everything up. And now this is the issue. Sometimes I build a list. Sometimes I don't build a list. There are times when I could really care less about being pen pals, and there are times when I want to be pen pals. Does that make sense? And it just depends. As an example, I don't really know that much about computers, so I've run out of things to, to mail these people pretty quickly. Um, and then you just start mailing general offers. But but let's kind of go back. I know somebody goes, Charles, do you want me to show you another example? Uh, by the way, I wouldn't go to 2 Live Support. I think that's a porn site. I ended up clicking on that. Not, not a really cool thing. Okay. Social anxiety support. Who goes to social anxiety support? Do you think the guy that's happy and has no issues in life is going to ha social anxiety support? Or do you think the guy that needs some um, anxiety medicine? The guy that needs anxiety or gal needs anxiety medicine. What would you pop up here? Maybe a ClickBank offer for how to get rid of your anxiety? Does anybody think you can find a ClickBank offer related to that offer? Okay. Everybody's agreeing that we could find a ClickBank offer related to that. We can, actually. I know, I know for a fact we can. Okay. But y'all want to get back to the MLM stuff, or you may just get sidetracked on fitness, weight loss, and other opportunities. Because remember, what was step one? Find a traffic source first. Do you notice that we just started finding a traffic source? We know this has traffic. I could absolutely care that social anxiety. I just want to look at the Alexa ranking. Do you think it's easier to find some place that's got traffic? Like, oh, I don't know, like maybe tech support alert or maybe find some site like that has the word ML in it, MLM in it, that like my lead system pro that I can pop up. Do you think that's an easier match than doing what a lot of people do? I could absolutely care less what site it is. All I want to know is do you have traffic? And if you've got traffic, what do your what's the problem your people need? Makes sense. Behind MLM, online support secrets, MLM help desk, MLM Volga, whatever, whoever that is, MLM rankings, MLM watchdogs. One thing I know is these people want MLM, so what do you do? Do you think you could sell them something MLM related? Just just ever by the rem ever remotely chance they could buy something MLM related. Okay. Is everybody finding finding out something new that they probably didn't know? Okay. And I'm going to show you. Would anybody like some of Jonathan Budd's affiliates? I hope he's not on here because, man, he, uh, he, he doesn't know me, but he'd probably come over here and kill me. Okay. Affiliate login. Who goes to Jonathan Budd's affiliate login? And who goes to Jonathan Budd's affiliate page? People that may remotely want to be his affiliates. So what would you pop up on top of his affiliate stuff, maybe join my affiliate program, make more money. Does that make sense? You want to get somebody's affiliate, you pop up on top of their what? Their affiliate page, right? How about this? Do you, would you want to pop up in his members area? Quick question, would you pop up in somebody's members area? I need a yes or no, guys. Okay. So do you think the quality of traffic in his members area or even on his OTO page would be higher quality? It would be. It would be. It's, I, can, I can tell you for a fact because I'm, I'm doing a lot of this. Um, it's extremely high quality. Actually, I can tell you Jonathan Budd, in my opinion, has the highest quality MLM traffic I've ever found. 
do you think maybe the Jonathan Budd blog, which, guys, have you ever been to the Jonathan Budd's blog? I'm just asking. The dude's got, like, killer content there. So the people going to Jonathan Budd's blog, what do you think they're doing? Do you think they would be good candidates for a pop-up for me getting them onto my list? Or getting them onto your list? I mean, last time I checked, he has some pretty good stuff. Then truth of the matter is, it's not necessarily his stuff, it's just how he treats his prospects, which makes a huge difference. Okay, another quick question. Let's go to the help desk, online MLM secret help desk. What did I tell you that the help desk was for? Buyers. What do you want to go bid on tonight? Buyers. Is anybody have, does anybody see any, any, any even remotely a little bit of potential here? Even remotely for anything else? Slightly a little bit of potential? Okay. Who thinks they don't see enough potential? I'm, I'm just asking. You know, I'm going to mute it. I'm going to take something, get something to drink. Who thinks they haven't seen enough potential yet? Uh-oh. Grant says he hasn't seen enough potential. Okay, no problem. Let's see even more potential here. Let's go to OfferVault.com. Let's see. Um, OfferVault, OfferVault, OfferVault. Um, let's go back and type in BizOp. Does anybody know what BizOp means, by the way? I'm just asking, does anybody know what BizOp means? Come on. Somebody over here has got business opportunity. Okay, business opportunity. That sounds good. It's people that want to make money online. BizOp. Okay, and let me just find BizOp, BizOp. Oh, Express Home Profits. Hmm, sounds good. I'm just randomly picking it. Could have no clue what it is. But I picked Express Home Profits. Let's take a preview of this. They're paying $110. Not bad, not bad, but it's not. I wanted to get a preview, but they're not giving me a preview, and that's fine. Let's see. I need to get something that's got a preview to show you what I want to do. Meltdown Millionaire BizOp. Oh, that sounds exciting. BizOp, Home Express Profits. Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let me just go ahead and click on this, and let's view the full landing page. Who comes to this kind of landing page, guys? Just asking, who comes to this? I mean, for, do you think this is geared toward male or females? It's geared toward women. Okay, we're, we're agreeing with that. So you would have a pop-up that – do you think your pop-up would be like manly or you think your pop-up would be feminine? Do you think you'd use like purple buttons on your pop-up or blue buttons? You want to use the pinks because you want to – you know, your pop-up would have to be geared toward women, which in this case hopefully would be kind of pink. Okay, so who thinks it's a good idea to pop up on top of this page to build a list of women wanting to make money at home? Okay, okay. Can y'all think of a better page I could pop up on? Okay. Who can think of a better page to pop up on? Ooh, somebody said working moms. Okay. Would it be better off if I popped up maybe on their registration page? Do you think that would be better to pop up on a registration page than it would be the blog? Or do you think we should pop up on both? Just asking, who thinks we should pop up on both? Somebody says both, and both is right. Okay, my name is Bob. My name is free, S-E-O, C-D, at jmail.com. Sounds good. I don't want these people spamming me, so I'm not – and I don't have a phone number, so I'm just going to put lots of aids in there. Okay, check for availability now. Oh, let's see. I'll make up a phone number. Hopefully that's not anybody's real number. Okay. You see where it says searching.php? You're going to have to look quick, guys. Do you think it would even be better to pop up on maybe their sales page? Okay. Do you think it would be better to pop up on maybe like their actual sales page versus their blog or their opt-in page? Or do you think we should pop up on all three of them now? Who thinks we should pop up on all three of them? We're all in agreement, three of them. I like that. Y'all smart, man. We got some good, we got good quality buyers here. 
Okay, scrolls down. Okay, get started now. Do you think we should, I don't know, maybe remotely pop up on their checkout page now? Do you think that would even be better yet to pop up on somebody's checkout page? I can tell you it is, really is, by the way. I can actually tell you these guys have some of the crappiest buyers you'll ever you'll ever get. Um, just because they want to make money like right now when you tell them they actually have to do something to make money, they get really, really mad. Okay. But does everybody follow that? We're popping up on their blog, their Lance Squeeze page, their sales page, and now their checkout page. Does that make sense? Do y'all think that is probably a little better than the average Joe? And if you'd like, we could even pop up on the exit page. We can. We can do that. And do you think we could pop up on their home page? Does anybody think we could pop up on their home page? Okay. Do you think we could also pop up on the client login page? Who thinks it would be a bad idea to pop up on somebody's client login page? Who thinks it would be a good idea? Do you think the client login page would be people that just like paid money? Like really paid money to come here and we're going to just like gather their best buyers up and bring them into the, what I call the cult of Charles? I don't only mean that in the nicest way, by the way. But, but does, does everybody follow that? Do you see how I just dissected this guy's entire site, getting his squeeze page, blog page, landing page, sales page, a support page, and now we've got his membership login page. And we can pretty much guess his members area too. Now, would you rather have the list of the um, leads that are drill blow leads, or you think you'd rather have a bunch of high quality leads like this? Just, just asking if you think the high quality leads would be, you know, would be the better, better thing. I mean, I'm just asking. Okay. Quick question, just because I got to get off in a few minutes. Did everybody get value out of coming here tonight? Now, guys, I have nothing to tell you, so it's not like I'm going to like wait, but wait, there's more. You know, okay, well, guys, go ahead and start answering. So if you've got questions, I don't know how Matt does. I don't know if y'all even, even get question and answer time. I have got no clue. Um, but if y'all, I mean, guys, how does Matt do it? Does he give y'all like QA time or does he like say, have a good day? Okay, okay, well, guys, we're doing Q&A then. Um, I have no clue what he does. Uh, let's do Q&A. Um, guess what? Go ahead and start asking questions. I really don't know what questions you have. Uh, he offers peer. It, well, well, Dave, if you give me your local pizza parlor, I will promise I'll have a, deliver, a pizza delivered to you. Question is, why was I kicked off a Weber? I have a number of different email lists, and my business partner mailed something stupid. And he got a bunch of complaints, and Aweber shut his account down, and because we were partners, they also shut my account down, no fault of my own. So what I'm saying is don't have a business partner. Okay, um, will I be at Nitrous? Um, probably not. I typically – I only do events I speak at, and I only do one event a year. Okay. Um are you teaching at Matt's event in South Dakota or SD in San Diego? No, he didn't invite me. I'm heartbroken. Um, Matt, dude, you didn't invite me. I made over a million dollars. I'm heartbroken here. Um, Jerry's asking, how do we monetize? Y'all want to know how you monetize this? You, you snipe their best buyers and you sell them stuff until they buy or they die. Don't ever do anything illegal. <clears throat> don't lie. Don't steal. Don't cheat. This is my theory. Um, I don't, I don't know how many people know me or how many people have any idea who I am, um, but I own, I will not I, – I seldom promote anything as an affiliate in the internet marketing space. I do it all the time as an affiliate in other niches because there's not so much scam crap. 
in the internet marketing niche, I have what's called the cult of Charles. I only promote my own products and my own stuff to my own people. That's it. Just simply, I don't typically want to promote. Occasionally I will, but you got to be somebody I know. Uh, will there be a recording of this? you got to ask uh, <laughs> Matt on that. I really got no clue. Um, yeah, who knows? I, I, I don't know. FTC disclaimer. I'm totally insane. have no clue what I'm talking about. You should never listen to anything I've got to say. Okay, Barbara says, that doesn't seem that hard. Why do so many say it's difficult to be careful? <laughs> Barbara, because they don't use tracking. Do you realize if you've got a campaign with 7,000 URLs in it, do you realize? I, <laughs> I can give you an example here. I've got a campaign has a boatload of URLs. How do you think we track them? Barbara, do you think you can keep up with 7,000 URLs if you're not tracking like a madman? We track everything. Get a little of this, guys. <laughs> Follow this. I track when you visit my site. I track when you bought something from me. I track how many visits it took you before you bought something from me. I track everything about what you do. Does that make sense? You want to know how we track all that? We have to use some pretty high intensity tracking software. I can you visit my site, my I can stalk you around the internet with banners. I can I know when you first visit my page and how many opt-ins, how many visits it took you before you bought. Do you think most people are willing to do that kind of I mean it's really you don't have to do that. You can easily do a lot less tracking and make money, but but that's how we do it if that makes sense. So, so do you follow that so far? You have to track this stuff, and there, there are different tracking softwares you can use. Okay. Um, let's see. Can I have your email or blog or phone number? Brett, no. I came in here as a guest, not to sell anything or promote anything, so I'm, I can't give it to you unless – just can't you do it. Um, Melody goes, how do we apply what you just did? Okay, Melody, make a list of everybody you like. Now, you just saw how much fun we had with, um, with Jonathan Budd's site. You saw the other site, which was that um, <coughs> business opportunity site. Make a list of sites like that that you want to target and do exactly what I did. We didn't – I mean I have a system that walks – kind of walks you through doing this kind of stuff. Um, but just imagine <coughs> – give an example here. This is a quick little campaign that I started and stopped because I needed to do something and I never got around to fixing it. We got 7,000 impressions on this one little campaign. 7,000 impressions is just one of them I'm willing to show. <clears throat> Basically, could you imagine if you sat down and made a list of every MLM company you'd like to target? You made a list of their products. You made a list of their help desk. Melody, make a list of all the gurus in the MLM space. Make a list of everything that they promote and build a massive monster list and then start promoting it. Start swiping out those leads. Does it make sense? Okay, Anthony goes, is there recording on this? I don't know. Hopefully they will. I mean – I didn't record it. Hopefully they did. Um, do you have any videos on your site that are more detailed? Absolutely. I have a lot of stuff like that. Um, let's see. I missed a portion of the webinar. Are you offering a product? Alex, no, I'm not. Um, I'm not. I, I've got plenty of them, but I'm not here to promote anything. I came as a guest. Uh, let's see. Sam goes, I thought a lot more people knew about PPV, so I'm surprised that there's only one bidder, and it was one cent a click. The problem is most people get in PPV. And they can't make any money because they don't track it. And then they go, man, this is all just a scam. <laughs> you know, this PPV stuff doesn't convert. And they leave. So you got always have a constant influx of new people. Okay, Melody's asking, how do you get pop-ups on these sites? I'll show you exactly how to get pop-ups on these sites. So let's go to something called Game Vance. Oops, I, sorry, I mistyped it. I'll show you exactly here. Guys, this is insane. People go to like some place like Game Vance. Game Van says, hey, we'll let you play all kind of cool games, and we'll even let you win awards. See, these people win, like some dude here won a you know, card. He's smiling. He won a $50 gift card or a Wii or something like that. For them, in order for them to get these games on their computer, they have to agree to install AdWare. See, it says third-party supported. Ad supported. No spyware. It's not spyware. Simple removal. All these companies give out free games. I mean, let's face it. Games are one of the most popular things in the world anyway on computers, probably next to some other items. Um, does that make sense? So they install free stuff. They get free games. They get free 
free game downloads from Amazon, everything you can possibly imagine. And and all they do need to do is see a couple ads. John's asking, what does it cost to get started in PPV? Well, John, um, it depends. Um, you don't really you should never look at anything as a cost. You should look at it as what is the ROI. If you would you you can build a list of a thousand prospects or you can build a list of a thousand buyers using and they don't even have to buy from you, they're buying from like other people. You're coming in there swiping them. So does that make sense? And one of the questions from Melody, you copied a bunch of code related to JBud but didn't come back to Oh, I'm sorry guys, I didn't come back to him. Was that something else? I don't remember. Let me look. Uh, basically, we came in there. Let me just type in VUDD and see how many Jonathan Bud related sites we can find. Let's see. We got. Probably should have Googled it different. Oh, JonathanBud.com. Basically, guys, what you'd want to do would be to create a giant list of Jonathan Bud related products, like DavidWood.hub pages. You would create all these, and basically you would go through and clean them out, and make sure you're only bidding on stuff that's relevant to you. Like Yahoo News futuristic market would not be relevant to you, but just imagine if you build a few thousand of these different URLs and started bidding on them, like Jonathan Jonathan Bud coaching products, contact Jonathan Bud, Facebook Jonathan Bud live about sweep MLMblog.net, David Wood .hub pages. Do you see that you, you all these pages you go to are related to Jonathan Bud? You plug them into your PPV, you know, like traffic vans or media traffic or lead impact, some of those other pages I showed you, and you could bid on these pages. You'd be bidding a penny, and you say, if somebody visits this page, make my pop-up appear. Pop-up is just a squeeze page. Um, Alex, where did I join? Um, don't have any, I, I've got stuff to sell, just not here. I'm here as a guest, so it's totally different. Um, what do you use to track them? Actually, Sam, there are a couple of different things. Um, guys, there's something called CPV Labs, which I truly love. It's insane. It tracks everything under the sun. It's very expensive. Another thing that you can use is called Demon Tracker, and it was a, a WSO a couple, well, a week or two ago. <clears throat> it does a lot of cool things. Or you could use like um, Tracking 202. Tracking... If I could spell, we could go there. Tracking202.com. Um, you have to use specialized tracking software because guess what? You can get 100,000 page views in an hour. If you're not careful, 100,000 page views in an hour will corrupt your database. Quick little side nugget here, guys. All of this stuff from the Internet runs on typically databases, a lot of it. What would happen if you get so much traffic to you corrupted your database? It wouldn't tell you what was working. You wouldn't know. You just say, "Man, I just had something. Don't know what's working." You can use like Tracking 202 or Prosper 202. You can, you know, you can use this to track your clicks, track your affiliate sales. Um, I use CTV Labs and absolutely love it. Okay, how can I get access to the last info you mentioned? Do you have a website? I do have guys. Guys, I've got a website, but I'm here as a guest, so I'm not here to poach buyers or to get buyers. Um, so I'm not here for that. I'm here just to give content. How many URLs do you need to get started with? Um, John, it really depends. i can give an example here. Like ebuddy.com, which I have no clue what that is. Hopeless not. Let's go to Booking Buddy. That has an Alexa ranking of 4,000, so that's getting a lot of traffic. You could take like maybe 10 of these sites that have a bunch of traffic, and they could get you a bunch of traffic. These sites right here, like 900,000, they get hardly any traffic at all. Does that make sense? So you would need more of these kind of URLs because they have a little bit of traffic, or you can get a handful of high-traffic URLs. So it totally depends. Okay, what do you use to track all your campaigns? Um, I use CPV Labs. It simply rocks. It is the best thing out there, hands down. Um, I use it for just a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of stuff. Um, a good example is, do y'all know anybody using HyperTracker? I'm just asking, do y'all know anybody using HyperTracker? I know Matt knows somebody personally who uses that hyper tracker. Come on, guys. Does anybody know, just 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 it? Does anybody know anybody using hyper tracker? I'm gonna show you something crazy. I'm gonna call somebody to freak out. 
Y'all have heard of johnchow.com? <laughs> Anybody heard, heard of this site? I'm going to try to show you an example. Okay. Would y'all like to see something totally insane? <laughs> totally insane. Okay, here's some dude that makes a thousand dollars a day. Actually, I'm gonna have to do this in um, Firefox. Shh, give me one second. I'm gonna show you something that's gonna cause cause you to rethink how you do business. Okay, everybody's with me. We're at johnchild.com, and I'm looking for a hyper tracker link. Don't see a hyper tracker link. Okay, I won't use this as an example. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. Okay, guys, quick question. You, do you look down here on my screen, and if you right click on this, and I want to copy link location. Do you see this URL? Bulldozerdigital.infusionsoft.com. Does anybody know what that means? Quick question. Does anybody know what that means? That is the URL. If I would have clicked on this banner, that's the URL which would have appeared ever so slightly in this browser. You know what we could do? I can bid on his Infusionsoft URL, same way I can bid on Matt's URL, same way anybody can bid on anybody's URL. I could bid on this right here, and anytime homeboy up here is getting his links clicked, he's happy. You know what? Guess who's intercepting his links? Who, who is getting his clicks? Who's popping over his clicks? Who pops? Come, guys, tell me who pops over. If, if you click this, dude has adware installed. Who pops over his clicks? Do you see we've intersected him right at that point? If you're using HyperTracker, we can, we can snipe out those links. If you know their link and you know their URL. And if you don't... And guys, if there any time the adware is on their computer, they see that, they click on that, guess what's going to happen? And the adware is on the computer, we're going to come in and we're going to take it. Is that beginning to make a little more sense to everybody? It's insane. Okay. Let's see. Um, one of the questions I need to go back to is shared hosting fine. No, if you're using shared hosting, if you look into the fine front of HostGator, you know what they tell you? You are limited to 300 connections per hour. Um, and guess what? You know what happens at 300 connections per hour? After that, they shut you down. Does that make sense? Is everybody so you need a VPS? Like, let's take a, a peek at this. Um, Internet Income Academy. Anybody heard of the Internet Income Academy? Quick question. Anybody heard of the Internet Income Academy? Going once, going twice. We're about to now. Right click on this dude's site. What do we do, guys? We go to uh, copy link location. We paste it in our browser here. I just want to look at it. InternetIncomeAcademy.com, free source. I don't need that. You know what we could do? I have no clue what Internet Income Academy is. Right, isn't this the Blues Brothers, I think? Or am I got – man, am I got the wrong people or is this the Blues Brothers? I think this is the Blues Brothers. I think they used to have Internet Income 360 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, this is the Blues Brothers. They had Internet Income 360 for a while. Okay. Watch this, guys. They're, we know for a fact they're advertising on here. And you know what? If you right-click on here, copy link location, I guarantee you – I guarantee you because believe me, I do this all the time – that if you paste it in here – Free, this is actually a, call, a query string. You don't need to know what a query string is, but here it says John Chow 1. I guarantee you every place that are advertising on the Internet is using the same link right here, and the source will equal whatever site they've got. Let's see what we can do. Oh, guess what? Internet Income Academy. How nice are these guys? They've got 9,180 links out here. Is that so nice of these guys? I hope you're not on the internet. Matt, I don't know how, who you have on here. I hope I'm not like, you know, ratting out too many people. But if you look here, 
you can see the stuff. I mean, guys, think about this. JohnChow.com, the .com lifestyle, there are links. You could find every single place these guys are advertising, and what would you want to do with it? I can intercept every single one of their clicks if the person if the person has the adware installed on in their computer by just bidding on this. Does anybody even remotely see the potential of this? I mean, remotely. I mean, if you don't, just say don't. I mean, that means I've done a bad job explaining. I need to keep. I need to keep working. Um, let's see. I make one hundred and eighty dollars every minute. Um, let's try to find one here. Um, I mean, just. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, honestly, it doesn't. I don't want to, like, rat out too many people. Um, let's go, oh, let's go to the make money here. And I'm going to show you something else. Have you ever paid for advertising, guys? Have you ever paid advertising for something that did not work? Would you all like to see a little trick to do split testing like has never been seen before? And I know Matt uses banners because I stalk his banners around the internet. I know which ones he's using. Um, you want to hear something crazy? <laughs> Would and, and I know Matt has advertised on um, John Chow before. Matt, how much? I mean, if you don't mind, if you don't want to say, that's fine. Um, but did you pay a fairly decent amount of money to have your banner up here? I did. I did. I paid oh. uh, for six months in the thousands. Okay. You know what we can do? I can have my pop-up appear here, and I can test out headlines. Think about this, guys. Your pop-up appears here, and it has it's, the headline would be related to the headline that you'd add on your banner. I can quickly tell with a pop-up on a site whether it's worth placing the banner or not. If I'm popping up on the site and I'm not and I'm getting opt-ins, but these opt-ins aren't converting, do you think I'll put a banner on the site if I can't get an opt-in with a full page? I'm having a pop-up. My squeeze page is popping up on top of this. People are not opting in, or they're opting in, and they're not buying. Do you think if I put a banner on the page, it would even do any different? Quick question, would a banner even do any better? Or if I'm I'm putting PP pop-ups all over the place, and guess what? I notice I'm getting conversions off one particular site. I will go back to the site and say, hey, dude, you got a banner for sale? And he's like, yeah, you know, dude, we've got tons of banners. How did you, you know? And guess what? I can rotate the band. I can already rotate my pop up. I can rotate the pop up, and I can know which headline is going to work best for that site because one headline does not fit all. Does that make sense? Does anybody think they could do some banner testing that way instead of going to outlay? Because I think Matt, you were using HyperTracker when you were, and I don't know if you're still using HyperTracker, but I know you were using HyperTracker when you were on John Chow. And what happens, you know, you can rotate, you can split test your banners using basically pop-ups before you ever actually do a banner insertion order. A good example, y'all ever heard of weather.com? I know you said, Charles, what's that got to do with, um, not, nothing to do with MLM, but just follow this for a second. Weather.com. I've made a boatload of money. You know how? By promoting weight loss offers on weather.com. Does that make sense? You say, Charles, but this has nothing to do with, with weight loss. That's crazy. Well, guess what? We're almost right. What happens, I tested pop-ups on this page forever. You know what happened? I started getting really, really good conversions. Like, I'm, I'm selling a boatload of weight loss stuff here. So you know what I did? I came over here and went to – and you can actually you can actually purchase – see these little ads right here? You can go to companies like Pulse 360. There are tons of companies in, tons of them. You can go to these companies, and they will sell you a link right here. Does it make sense? Would you want to go like put a link right here? And it is expensive. This stuff's not cheap, by the way. But – do you think you'd want to put a link up here on something that's never, ever been tested? Has anybody got like you know just a few thousand dollars laying around that they would just like to watch burn up in thin air in about 30 minutes? 
So if you're using pop-ups, you can determine pretty doggone quickly, wait a second, weight loss pop-up. I had 10 pop-ups rotating. Weight loss does really good for weather. I don't know why. Wouldn't really make sense to me, but I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to argue the stats. Does that make sense? And then, then I went up here and said, hey, now I want some weight loss love. Do you think that would be an easy and simple way to test things than what most people do? Okay, let me go back to the questions. If y'all got questions, you got to ask them, guys. And let me go back here. I need to pause it for a second and get a drink of tea. Okay, um, Sheldon, he is actually, Sheldon is one of my students. Um, okay, um, let's see. How to make a, a banner pop up on the targeting site. Basically, you do that within the software. Um, like the like lead impact, traffic advance, media traffic, you do it from these guys, and I'm just going to use one of them right here, lead impact. Um, you would just go into lead impact and say, I'd like to be bidding on these targets, and it's all self-serve, which means you load it up, you put it in the squeeze page, you tell them what squeeze page to promote, what targets to promote, they just take care of it. Okay, let's see. David says Matt always records. I hope they do. You know, he's out of the country. He's he's not in Australia anymore. He's in San Diego. You never know what kind of internet connections we have. Okay, Martin goes. Where do we go to buy PPV credits to put our squeeze page in front of them? Places like Lead Impact, Traffic Vance, Media Traffic, and Direct CPV. And that's where you, you basically go in here. But if you don't have your tracking software set up, it's going to be a total disaster. Total disaster. Okay. Um, Let's see. Explain PPV. <coughs> oh, PPV. PPV means a pop-up. It's it basically you visit a site and a pop-up happens. So let's go back to. Um, let me just kind of show you an example here. Basically, you would be out visiting a site like this, kind of minding your own business. Life is good. Go in the, and all of a sudden you'd visit a site and boom, a pop-up would appear. And these pop-ups are like 750 by 550 viewable, typically 800 by 600. So you can get a pretty good size page in there. And basically these things pop up and get people to opt in or get them to like siphon them off to go buy stuff. Um, you know, it just missed it. Um, Sarah goes, what is Traffic Vance? That's where you suggest it. Actually, um, Traffic Vance is a high-end traffic network. It takes $1,000 to get in plus a referral. Um, they only take people that like to really – if and if you don't start spending a bunch of money with it, they'll cancel your account. Um, traffic Vance rocks because it doesn't have newbies. Um, so it's kind of like – traffic. I tell people do not go to Traffic Vance because that's like the Olympics of PPV. Um, cut your teeth on Lead Impact. Cut your teeth on Media Impact. Lead Impact, Media Traffic, cut your teeth there. Once you know what you're doing, then move to Traffic Vance. Okay, let's see. So, uh, Melody, Melody asked a good question. You have um, – at Melody, I'm actually not going to answer that question, but yes, it is international traffic. Uh, John's asking – yes, okay. <laughs> Sam goes, what PPV company, media traffic, lead impact, direct CV, traffic advance has given you the greatest ROI? Traffic advance beats everything hands down. The problem is it takes $1,000 to get in there. And it's referral only, and if you do something wrong, they'll kick you out. Um, they don't play around. Somebody's asking, what is the software I'm using? It's, um, <laughs> these are my own private software tools, and there a few people do have access to them. Okay, um, is the webinar coming, being recorded? I came in late. I think it is, but I'm not totally sure. James goes, how do, you, how do others feel about this, and what could they do to stop you? They can't do anything to stop you. Um, I will admit I have people popping up on my sites. Makes me mad. Makes me aggravated. But you know what? I pop up on other people's sites. So what can I really do? And you can't block these pop-ups because they're delivered via adware. Pop-ups that are delivered via the browser, <laughs> they can stop. Adware pop-ups cannot be stopped. Okay. Um, Melody goes, yes, HyperTracker. If somebody's using HyperTracker, you can actually tag their HyperTracker URL. And I think we know plenty of marketers using HyperTracker. And you can actually steal – not steal. You can ethically pop up in front of all their hard work and make your life easier. Um, okay, and uh, let's see. Yes, we all know somebody there from HyperTrack. Come on, questions, guys. Um, has affiliate link. Um, don't 
Melody, I don't follow that question. His affiliate. Oh, yes. Yes, his affiliate link. Okay. Um, even if you don't do track it, I can still pop up. Somebody's asking. I think we're looking at the Blues Brothers example there. Um, let me come over to it. Uh, I don't know if they get Internet Income Academy. Um, you know, we, basically, these guys are using very basic referral right here. I mean, this is just a very basic referral a fifth, um, type of affiliate, and we can still come in and snag it. Okay, um, you showed us how to swipe um, Infusionsoft, so it doesn't have to be the exact. No, it does not have to. <coughs> Guys, this is an important lesson. A lot of people go, well, it has to be the exact URL. No, I can actually bid on certain parts of the URL. I can bid on, like, maybe this piece right here. I can bid on this piece right here. I can even bid on um, – is anybody familiar with something called ClickBank? Just asking a quick question. Anybody familiar with ClickBank? Go in once. Go in twice. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. If any of this is over your head, don't worry about it. It took me, like, forever to learn how to do this stuff. Okay? Um, okay, so quick question. Anybody familiar with ClickBank? Most people said yes. Okay. <laughs> what do you think this little piece right here is? Let me actually show you here. Okay, see where it says merchant site? This is the entire ClickBank database I pulled down. I can grab every one of the sites in ClickBank and bid on it. Do you think that would have any potential to make just a slight little bit of money? Slight little bit of money. Remotely just a teeny bit of money. Do you think I could go down to the internet marketing stuff here and start bidding on these things? Because we know mymommybiz.com is like high-tech stuff, right? We could also bid on the vendor's affiliate ID. <clears throat> Brian, just imagine this. I could go to ClickBank, and I, every time somebody goes to mymommy.biz and they've got adware installed on their computer, you know I could actually pop up in front of that site. Do you think it would be powerful to start like – I mean you're looking for buyers? Another question, another question. I'll give you another example. <clears throat> I, see, the issue is I got to make sure that my webinar is, is so good that it will pay for Matt's. You know, you, you pay for your like one month membership here. I got to make sure my content pays for that. Or Matt might like get mad at me or something. Okay. Anybody heard of something called Clickshare? Quick question. Anybody heard of Clickshare? Well, don't worry about it. You're about to now. Clickshare sells internet marketing, business opportunity, make money online products. Most of them questionable at best. But guess what? If you buy a questionable internet marketing product and you go to the help desk, why would you go to the help desk? Do you realize this is the main help desk for a company that sells millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars? They go there because, man, they just bought something that was overhyped and promised to do millions. Push buttons, make money online, scam. Guess what? Do you think you could pick up some people who are interested? You know, you know they were at least buyers because who would come to the help desk of a company selling a business opportunity, make money online type product? Okay. How about this? I mean, Matt. I mean, you got time. I mean, you do y'all need like to continue just going? You know, like giving you crazy stuff, or y'all want to like you know say good night and have a good night? You there, Charles? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, sorry, I just have myself on mute. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm good either way. It's, it looks like okay, from the okay. feedback, people want you to keep going. So, okay, let's go ahead. And let's kick it into high gear, guys. Okay, now I think we should all be familiar with ClickBank. If not, you should be. Um, let's type in vendor. I'm going to show you something that will cause you to have, like I tell you, somebody somebody tonight is going to have some problems sleeping. And if you don't have problems sleeping, I didn't do my job. Not that I can give you a refund or anything. I just tell you I, I didn't do my job. Okay, let's go ahead and click on vendor. And let's just go to the, I don't know, maybe the vendor referral program. Let's click on vendor help. Okay. Oh, that page isn't found. Let's see if we can back up and go to the uh, selling basics. This is what we need. Okay. Let me give you a quick, and this may be overhead, just don't worry about it, guys. Just follow along with me. You have to understand, I'm slightly insane. I'm hyped up on, I'm hyped up on tea, you know, hardcore stuff here. Okay, let's see. I'm looking for 
say return I'm looking for looking for the right thing here and this is not what I'm looking for I'm going to go back to vendor and unfortunately it's something I don't typically have to go show people so um let's see I'm going to say what is a how to get started as a vendor that's perfect okay this is what happens in Clickbank um, this is a Clickbank hop link, which is kind of like your affiliate link. Just imagine with me, guys. This is the link right here. Hop dot and let let me just open up a brand new notepad here. It's okay. Does this look weird to anybody, by the way? It it it. Don't worry if it does. Okay, your yeah, item number would be like what item number? Do you think people have like multiple products to sell, by the way? They do. So let's just say item number one. Vendor is like who is the dude selling the product. Do you remember my little handy dandy spreadsheet right here? Did anybody like pay attention to the fact that I've got this massive spreadsheet with crazy amounts of data? Does anybody do, guys, do you ever wonder where where people like me come up with this crazy stuff from? Anybody ever wonder where you just like you know wake up and find a copy of the ClickBank database sitting there, you know, sitting in your inbox waiting for you to manipulate it? Okay, I'm gonna say ETV Corp. I know because this is a great product, and that is the name of the vendor. Let me just paste that in there. Now, I just built a hop link. If I put this in my little browser window here, it's gonna take me to a site where you can get like free TV on your satellite. No, free TV on your Free TV on your PC, but there's a problem. Where did I show up at, guys? Would anybody did, did I show up at their home page or did I show up on their order page? Would anybody tell me what page it showed up on? The order page. Do you think it would be even remotely useful to show up on people's order page? I mean, guys, if you don't think it would be useful to show up on order page, you just say, Charles, you know, I don't think the order page really does anything for me. Um, you know. You know, you can say that. I can say, you know, just let me know. I mean, if you don't think the order page is cool, let me know. Now, let me tell you this. That little trick I just showed you is worth an stupidly insane amount of money. I mean, just stupidly insane. Do you think it would benefit you to pop up on people's order page if you were selling a internet marketing make money online type? Okay, let's open our handy dandy little spreadsheet here, and because obviously, if we're trying to sell, make money online, um, some dude selling TV stuff probably probably isn't going to be what you need. I, I I could be mistaken. I could even be remotely mistaken, but it's probably not going to be what you're looking for. You'd probably want to like maybe pop up on top of like maybe some of this internet marketing stuff. I don't know. Um, you ever, yeah, yeah, look, give me an internet marketing product. Let's see. I'm trying to find one here. It's the problem is the spreadsheet is so big. I get it every day. I get a brand new copy every day. And sometimes it's a little unwieldy. It doesn't want to listen to me. Let's see. Computers and internet. Let me go computers, business. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Um, give me a second, guys. Okay. E business right here. E here. Um, four surveys. Let's just open up our little handy dandy little notepad right here. Let me paste that in. What would happen when I go to this page? This page is about some dude selling surveys. Because we all know, I mean, guys, everybody on here knows that um you can make money with surveys, right? I mean, I mean, we all know that's legitimate, right? I mean, there's not anybody in here who's questioned that this is legitimate, right? Everybody knows that there's like, you know, these people make billions and billions of dollars taking surveys. We should all quit internet marketing and just take surveys 24/7 because I mean that's I mean they tell the truth, right? Cash surveys exclusive membership access. The dude or gal is about to pay seventy-four dollars. Do you think you could pop up? I don't know something called I am Revolution for nine dollars on top of this. Do you think it would be easy enough to sell a nine-dollar copy of I am Revolution versus a seventy-four dollar copy of Make Money with Surveys? I'm just asking because I know – I mean, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. first product I ever bought from that was the I Am Revolution, and I just grabbed it. I was going somewhere. I wanted something to read, grabbed it, and I was like blown away because Matt really knows this stuff. I mean, seriously, I'm impressed with him. So do you think you could promote I Am Revolution on the order page, click check out page of ClickBank? I mean, 
Does anybody think that would have a potential to make just a little bit of money? And it might not. You say, Charles, you know, I know for a fact, I don't think this would make a dime. I think it's a scam, as a matter of fact. I don't think ClickBank sells anything. You want to know how this works? It's not about getting the traffic. Traffic is easy. There's no shortage of traffic on the internet. It's about getting conversions, and it's about tracking those conversions down. Because you know what? You may discover, because I'm going to bust a bubble here, that Matt's offer does not convert on get cash from surveys because the people who are taking surveys just want to like push buttons and make money where Matt says you actually have to like get off your ass and do something. Matt's people may say, you know, the survey people say, no, man, it takes too much work to build a real business. I'd rather take surveys. And, you know, is everybody getting at that? So you may find that just because you're popping up on the order page does not mean these people are just the best people in the world. What what you could probably do, like a Philorama. Let me just grab the Philorama link here. Anybody familiar with a Philorama, a Philorama, by the way? The dude's from like the same place Matt is. I think I think he's from, I think he is. Um, I've got a client who's in Perth, Australia, who's actually, it's funny. Let's see, that, you know, it's pasted in here, Philorama. Oh, product's no longer for sale. Okay, well, you know what we need to do? We could try maybe product two. Oh, guess what? Product's not for sale. What you want to do is you can actually cut this. If you want to, you could even cut this piece off right here, and you could just bid on this piece right here. So any product that they've got listed would what? Show up. You could snag any product that they're going to the checkout page for. Do you just remotely think that has just the ever so, I mean, just the slightest possible chance now let's look at this. Let's look at cash system one, two, three. I'm not saying this thing's a total scam, but um, I would highly recommend you not buy it. Just telling you, just being honest. Cash system one. Oh, now it's cash system X. It was cash system one, two, three. Dudes advertise it all over the place. I know that for a fact because I've stalked the guy religiously. Not like I'm a stalker, but internet marketing, I, I, I tag his tra traffic every every chance I get. Really doesn't have that good quality traffic. But anyway, look at this. Cash system one, two, three. You know what we could do? I could paste this in here, and I could just bid on this right here. Anytime somebody goes to check out, what happens? Guys, what happens when they've got the adware installed on the computer, and they're, they're going here to check out? And what would happen if you're the highest bidder? Your pop-up would appear. So what would your pop-up tell them? Make money online. Why are people going to this site? Sorry, going to... It's got too many browser things open. Why are people coming here to make money online? That's it. Would you want to bid on this guy's affiliate member, affiliate, or even his login area, login page? Do you think you could snag his members? I tell you, tell you for a fact, you can't. I also tell you that these people aren't the best people ever because they're like really cheap. Just, just telling you the truth there. Um, but look at this. We can also look at a bunch of this data. Let me just open this up here. We can tell their gravity, which is how many affiliates are making sales. We can tell how long they've been into ClickBank. I even have a way of pulling up all their old keywords I can use. I can tell how much – if they're paying recurring commission, how much they're earning per sale. I mean, there's a massive amount of data here, and I'm not not here to show 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 off this data, but I'm just telling you, it it once you have the data and once you totally understand how to make this work, do you think you could change a lot of things you've been doing? Do you think you could potentially get better quality traffic? Virginia is asking, how do you get this product from this data from ClickBank? Um, you really need to be one of the top 100 affiliates to get that data. And most of the people like me aren't sharing it. I do share it with some people, but most people aren't going to get it. Okay, um, come on, guys. Any more questions? I got to get to bed. Matt, Matt's probably got jet lag or something. I don't know. I, I think it's it's probably what eleven. Matt's probably what noon your time. What? what? It's it's eight thirty here in uh, San Diego, but back home it would be uh, it'd be something like eight a.m. 
So I'd, I'd so, still be sleeping. Oh man, I wish I could say that. I got two kids; they get me up every day. I got to get them up, get them to school. But um, I enjoy getting taking my kids to school. But boy, it's a challenge. Um, but anyway, guys, um, yeah, I, I, I guys, I, there's nothing to sell. So I, I see people like sending me the emails and stuff like that, guys. I'm not here to get buyers. I'm not here for any of that. I'm not even here to tell you how you can find me. I don't exist. I'm a figment of your imagination. Really, I'm Matt's alter ego or something. I don't know. Um, I don't exist. Don't Google me. You never find me. But what I'm trying to say is there is a ton of traffic out there that most people never realize. Does that make sense? Most people just walk around going, you know, I'd like to make some money online. Can't seem to, can, you're not going to make it until you get traffic. Once you get traffic, it has to be targeted traffic. I mean, we can go out to AdFly right now and get 100,000 visitors in the next 24 hours. Promise you, you won't sell anything, and the people that you get on your list are going to be bogus emails. So it's not about traffic. It becomes about targeted traffic, and then once you get that, you have to track it to understand how to get the maximum value out of it. I mean, I've seen Matt's funnels. I've, I know how my funnels look. I've seen Dagan's funnels. I mean, and the guys that are really killing it are the people that really have very, 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 very deep funnels. Does that make sense? Now, guys, any last questions before we go? Did, a quick question. Was this worth the entire membership for Matt's product? I hope it is. I mean, cause I, I just want, you know, because, you know, Matt invited me on here. I mean, guys, you got to put me on the spot. I'm like, well, gee, I don't, if I don't deliver any content, they're going to be like, Matt, we want to – you know, you're, or they'll be growling at Matt, sending him hate emails, and he'll be mad at me, and, and bad karma happens. So I figured I'd give you some really cool, useful stuff that has the potential to make you a little bit of money or a lot of money. FTC disclaimer, I've never made any money. Nobody's ever made any money. The Internet's a hoax, probably propagated by aliens. I'm just saying, has that potential. Um, so, guys… Is this I mean is this some of the best training I, I just want to know just tell me was it did you enjoy the training was it and you know who gave you better training is you know I just want to kind of get some feedback what would you like to see differently I mean you may say Charles you speak too fast don't like your southern accent um, you may say I don't like the fact that you know you showed Jonathan Bud's help desk or something I don't know it could be anything I don't really care. Um, I just want to kind of make sure everybody is cool, everybody is following along, and I've been doing this since 1999. So, I mean, a lot of things I cover, I've ran through fast, things that have taken me years to learn, and I'm trying to, like, consolidate it in a very small amount of time. Virginia goes a little confused, but excellent information. And Virginia, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be blatantly honest with you. There's no possible way you can pick everything up. You'd have to watch this webinar a few different times with a notepad, taking notes every couple minutes. Um, the stuff, and I didn't even show you actually how to do it. I just showed you the concept of it. So you see the concept of it. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna drop one last little golden nugget. Let me get something to drink, and I'm gonna drop one last golden nugget. Will freak people out. <clears throat> Matt, answer this question for me. I visit your squeeze page and I leave. What happens? I am revolution. Uh, we go to a down sell. Okay. Okay. How about I visit your squeeze page and I leave. What do you show me? A pop up. Or do you show me some type of exit pop? Yeah, just just on the sales page. When you leave, it goes <laughs> to a down sell. There's a little okay. pop up. Okay. What happens if I visit your your page twice? Do you show me the same pop-up? We do. Yep. What happens if I could tell you? Would you like the, the? You think the person who sees the exit pop for the second time is any more qualified than the person who sees it for the first time? Sure. Yeah. What you can potentially do is, and I've got a tracking script. I can send it to you. Um, and it depends on if it's word-based. <laughs> guys, I want you to follow along with this. Um, we were buying traffic, buying fairly what I would consider decent traffic. We were getting the same visitors visiting the squeeze page, and if they didn't opt in, they would leave. 
So if we block traffic from the same place, do you think if they didn't opt in the first time, you think I'm going to get them to opt in the second, third, or fourth, or fifth, or tenth time? No. So what would happen if they came back? I'd show them the same page. We got smart. We have a script. I'm not, I'm not selling. I'm just telling you that it exists. If you came back to that page and you saw a different opt-in, would it increase your chances of getting somebody to opt-in? It would. Okay. Matt, let me give you one last question before I go. I visit your sales letter, right, for the video for your – for um, I think for this product. It's, um, what, like an hour video? Right. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually seeing your PowerPoint slides. Okay, okay. No, no, I'm just making a comment. If, if I go to right. your – okay, if I go to your page, I'd see what? Your sales letter? Yeah, for for I am revolution. Okay, okay. Uh, is is it does it have a timed a video time buy button? No, no, that's actually a written sales setup. If you're talking about the inner circle. Yes, the inner circle. That, that's, that, what, that, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's that's a video. So yeah, it's about forty five minutes or something like that. Okay. Um, when does the buy button pop up? Somewhere around uh, thirty five minutes, I'd say. Okay. What happens if I visit that page and I want to buy, but the kids – I don't know. The kids and dogs get in a fight, and I need to leave and come back? Do I do I have to watch the entire video again before I see the buy button? You do. What would happen if you come? somebody returns back to your video sales page? If you said, hey, Bob's already been to my page. I'm going to show him a different page without a time to buy button. Get more sales. Get more sales. I'll send you that plug in tomorrow, by the way. Cool. Um so, guys, I want you to think through that. Um, it's not about brute force traffic. It's about making better use of your existing traffic. Does that make sense? It's not – because most people make the mistake of like, I just need more traffic. No, you don't need more traffic. You need better use of your existing traffic because if I'm watching the video, the inner circle page is you – know, I'm like, you know, dogs and – I mean, guys, have you all ever had kids – and the dogs fighting downstairs or something like that, and you're like, oh god, got to go fight, got to go separate my golden retriever who's like begging for yum yums for my daughter while she's eating pizza. <laughs> I can't see the sales that are leave it. You come back. Guess what? Then you're like, you know, I don't want to sit through another 30 minutes buy button. I just want to buy. I already want to buy. I just don't, you know. <laughs> or guys, how about this? And let's let's use Matt's example here. <clears throat> I see the I am Revolution for nine dollars. I don't buy. I come back to the page. Do you think I should? If <clears throat> it would be cooler to say, to, you, you know, you already know that you they've seen the page. You could actually say, hey, you know, we've added, you know, to encourage the sale, you could even offer additional bonuses. On top of the page, you could say, thank you for being a return visitor. We've added three additional bonuses to the I am Revolution, and they expire in 24 hours, and you got a little countdown timer. Guys, does anybody think you can increase your affiliate sales doing that kind of stuff? You could, and if you couldn't, let me know because there's definitely got to be a problem. Well, guys, I've had way too much caffeine tonight, as y'all as probably uh, as probably imagined. I, I've, I hopefully did everybody get golden nuggets out of this because I'm gonna have to like hop out because I, I got a, call, a couple calls due tomorrow. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And um, with that said, Matt, I just want to say, dude, thank you for letting me come on. I mean, I hope you don't mind. I hope probably, hopefully, it didn't take too much of your time. No, man, I I loved it. Like out of every single inner circle call we've done, I I would fairly confidently say that this is definitely the most uh, valuable. I mean, at least to me. I mean, half this stuff that you were showing, I wouldn't know myself. So I'll be watching this again. Um, What's what is your blog? What's your URL? If people want to learn more about what you're doing. Where would they go? Okay, um, the easiest place to go is definitely not Cash One Two Three because that is not mine. Um, it, the easiest place to learn more about me. I mean, do you mind if I just paste the link in there? It's my blog, sure. Charles Kirkland blog, um, and that's like a squeeze page on the blog. Um, let me paste this in. If you want to learn more about me. Um, and I will be honest with you. I have I probably drank way too much sweet tea, or in this case, unsweet tea. So most likely, I run like a chihuahua on crack. Let me send that to all there. And guys, opt into there. 
And guess what? I promise I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to send you like 20 emails a day to say, come buy my crap, come buy my crap, come buy my crap. Um, <clears throat> I'll send um, email you a couple times a week and tell you that you should buy everything. And if you're lucky, you can become what's called part of the cult of Charles. The cult of Charles is just imagine a bunch of people running around knowing the same stuff I know. Totally insane. So, guys, what do you want to do? I'd, I'd like you to opt in. I just want to opt in you because know, I think I got cool stuff to begin with. Um, so, anyway, guys, did everybody get the link? Because I'm probably not the most proficient with GoToWebinar, even though I do probably three or four webinars a week. I am probably not the most proficient with it. Um, so, did everybody get it? Let's see. Let's see all. Okay, good. Um, <coughs> So now, see, guys. You know, as y'all can tell, I'm such a bad marketer. I didn't even have like a special link for you, or any bonuses or anything like that. One thing I got to tell you is, go to my blog. You'll see me, big pictures of me, and opt into this. I got videos, um, cool stuff, and you know, that's I guess the end of it. I mean, I hope everybody has enjoyed it, and um, you know, see, guys, Matt put me on the spot. He's like, Charles, if you don't deliver, boy, I'm gonna be mad at you. So that so I had to make sure I totally delivered and um you know and that's the thing I just want y'all to be happy and I want you I want first of all I want to say I think we need to all give Matt a congratulations because it dude just crossed a million dollar mark or about to so I think we all need to give Matt a congratulations on that I, I need some virtual cheers here guys <laughs> come on I don't see any virtual cheers we got cheerleaders here raw raw go 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 perfect 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 my wife's even saying raw 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 man the million mark million dollar mark is special. Um, you know, celebrate it with, uh, you know, a, a good bottle of Corona and some, you know, co Corona and a pack of salt and vinegar chips and, you know, life is good. <laughs> so, um, you know, guys, I, I, I just want to say thank y'all. Um, thank you for putting up with me. I had a bad cough. Y'all notice I like to mute myself out every five minutes while I coughed. Um, so with that, guys, I want to say thank, I want to thank each and every one of y'all. Um. My goal, as always, is to do nothing but deliver value, and I um, hope you enjoyed it. So I'm going to pass this back over to Matt, and I'm, I'm going to say good night on my end, guys. Thanks, Charles. Thanks very much. So, guys, uh, like you said, I mean, I can see all the comments coming in. looks like you all loved it. We've still got most of the people on the call, so, uh, yeah, just take action. Try this PPV stuff. I'm going to be trying it myself. Let me know how it goes in the group. And uh, thanks, guys, and we'll see you next week.